Yeah. Okay, you're good. All right. Welcome to the OSRS podcast. I am Mitt Mad Cow. How's it going on, boys? Rakes as always. And it's me, Vice Cove. So today we have the extraordinary sexy PVMer known as Tasty. Well, nowadays he's called by Tasty Life, you know, because that's. Good morning, good morning. All about. How are we doing, everybody? Life. Yeah, it's nice to have you, man. First time having Mr. Tasty over here. So we're going to do some Q&As with the boy, and then we're going to get into some good old Race 3 uh, discussions all about it. So uh, Mr. Tasty had some firsthand uh, interactions with uh, Jagex on working for some of their promos so for Race 3. So it's going to be a really interesting discussion. He knows Insider information, boys. That's all true. right, you got to pay. I will be breaking NBA money. on the podcast. I will be breaking <laughs> it all. So, yeah, just get ready. For the fans. And if you want more NDAs broken, make sure this podcast hits a thousand likes, boys. Raids free. Get your swords ready, dude. I told Rakesy I shouldn't be the one who does this. I don't. What about the sellout portion? I, <laughs> that was a I, think, I think you did well. He's getting really good at it. Perfect. He's getting, no, that was good. Reminded them to like the video. You know, easy clap. Well, so, yeah, I was gonna say just go ahead and subscribe to you because we are gonna be bringing you emergency podcasts with breaking news and sounds like every week we're having something to talk about. You know, fresh start worlds. Hopefully, PVP <laughs> blogs and now Raid Street. So, it's gonna oh be a good time. Fresh start. Yeah, man. star baby dude there's been so much content that's come out in the last two weeks it's almost overwhelming like there's so much stuff that i am personally looking forward to but right we're gonna get into a q a with you tasty so um like i said briefly just before the podcast like from my perspective you kind of just came out of nowhere man like <laughs> i get that a lot I, yeah. I, I just, like, are you voting him kind of a, you kind of appeared at one point i was like oh damn i was like who's this guy um, so I'm going to start with like the most generic question that we always ask, which is yep. uh, how long have you been playing RuneScape for? <laughs> oh, that's that's actually a good question. Um, not as long as I think a lot of people think I have. I played when I was a kid. I played in like probably 2006, 2005, maybe into 2007. I don't remember. Like I, I, I didn't play that much. I was pretty bad because I was a kid and like no one's good at video games. Uh, and then I didn't start playing again until like late 2018 it was after the tob release so i've i've never been around for like a raids release or like inferno or any of the big pieces of content um so i'm i'm super stoked to be around now like this is kind of the most important thing i've been here for uh as a creator so it's gonna be cool dude wait that that so you came into <clears throat> old school runescape to you touched in it when you were younger and then you came into it properly in 2018 mm. that's kind of mad because like from what yeah. i've seen of your content you've you've maxed you've got the zuck helmet like you've literally just like i'm sweaty, I'm you've sweaty. <laughs> Damn. okay do you uh speed run at all like how sweaty are you you know what's funny is i actually the only reason i know what twitch is is because i i used to watch speed runs like that's, that's what got me into Twitch and like the eventual path that got me. What, into what kind of speed runs? Like, like games done quick or like? Um, I'll, yeah. I'll I'll always watch GDQ if it's on. Um, but the the main games that I used to watch are Dark Souls. I still watch that. That's oh, like my yeah, longest dude. sub on Twitch is this guy who who speed runs Dark Souls. Uh, Super Mario sixty four. Yeah, that's a classic dude. One. Did you know really Frame can do that? He's a he, he can, can speed run. That? Dude, he can play Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Odyssey, dude. The guy's That's... an actual god, bro. All right, we got we to force him to do that sometime. We got to make sure. him stream that. That'd be pretty good. For sure, dude. Cool, fun fact. But there's, there's like a large crossover. A lot of um, Super Mario 64 runners, <laughs> like even the really top guys, they all play RuneScape. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of strange. I don't know why or where that crossover happens. Yo, e but... Even like the shooter people, too. They like, they'll randomly yeah. just talk about on their Twitter. And shooter like... people. Call them FPS. Yeah, the FPS. The FPSers. <laughs> <laughs> FPSers. I don't know. They sound, it sounds weird, too. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah, I used to, uh, when I was streaming, I would host random, like, Mario Sunshine speedrunners. They're like, where the fuck are these people coming from? And I just raid their yeah. shit. Oh, dude, because I love that content so much. So um, it's nice knowing that you came from a speedrunning background, which kind of fits I, in I never speed TV ran, <laughs> by the way. I just Still. watched it. I, I never yeah, did. Yeah. Inspiration, you know, that's just kind of how it transcends a little bit. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my path to starting RuneScape was kind of interesting, actually. My, um, my roommates in college, they, for some reason, they all started playing RuneScape one semester. 
<laughs> and like their goal was to get a quest cape by the end of the semester. And the entire time, like I was just making so much fun of them. I was like, RuneScape <laughs> oh. is a children's game. Like this oh. game is so dumb. Like there's not even hard. Like why are you guys playing this? So and you're I, saying? I think, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was saying, bro. I, I was <laughs> roasting them. <laughs> and uh because like we were in college i was like i was a douchebag um but i think my phone like just started listening to me and on youtube i started getting torvesta video recommendations oh boy oh. and like torvesta i i i honestly i admire torvesta a lot like he, i think he is <laughs> easily one of the best youtube creators because of how accessible his videos are like, I would watch them as someone who has zero RuneScape experience. I started clicking on them because they kept getting recommended. And he just kept me entertained. And then at some point, I was like, why does he keep saying smited for an AGS? Like, what does that mean? And I would look up what smiting was. I would look up what an AGS was. Oof. And I would, like, piece together all this information about RuneScape. And so I had this, like, weird base knowledge. And I, I never PvP or PK. But for some reason, I just had this weird base knowledge about it. And when I graduated college, um, I was working part time as like a personal trainer. So I had a lot of free time. And I was like, what if I just I, I had recently quit CSGO. I was like, I don't want to play <laughs> CSGO anymore. And I'm, I'm kind of done with it. I usually play like one main game at a time. So I was like, I'll, I'll pick up RuneScape. And I made a RuneScape account. And from that day forward, I, pro I probably played like 12 hours a day. For, for like oh a year and a half, oh, I ma I maxed in almost a year and a half. It was like a year and seven. Jesus, months. modern day. No, that's ambitious, right honestly. Yeah, I, I I went hard, bro. I went extremely hard at it. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I got into RuneScape. That's my story. Kind Wait, of, so <laughs> kind of funny, dude. How did you go from like a year and a half of not playing it? Wow, a year and a half of playing it from level three to like max. Like yep. you must have followed some guides or you must have like watched some youtube videos surely like, oh i consumed a lot of content yeah i um <clears throat> i yeah I, I just consumed an insane amount of runescape content because i mean runescape is the one game where like you're supposed to watch youtube videos while you play it <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> like, <clears throat> that's why i tell people i'm like runescape that's the art of runescape you can watch netflix exactly. and feel like you're getting games on your account there's no exactly game like it. Yo, it's I, the per I, like if there's so many different things you could do you could afk and watch a movie or you could go full focus and just like you know it's, it's yo, a good I, game. I have a confession it was it. probably 73 percent of the reason that i had good grades in school nice yeah i'll be like <laughs> all right well you know if i if i if i studied for two hours i, I could get two hours of lobsters because like i was i was really big into it you know when old school came out Right. And obviously yeah. I was like in the peak of school, high school, you know, had to get those good grades for myself. And it was like, yeah, two hours of lobsters. Um, that's like good XP, good money. And I get to study and I ace my test. Like, and I just kept doing so it. So if you didn't play RuneScape, you wouldn't have graduated. Is what you you I, I, I think I'm out of high school. I, dude, I might have gone like some C's and B's, you know, and yeah, that wouldn't. Can I, 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 I hate it. I hate it. Saved your career. Yeah. Really C's and B's. Yeah, Honestly. <laughs> don't, you be, don't be talking shit on C's and B's, bro. What do you mean, man? That's. More oh, than that, is that you, sir? Is that you? I'm sorry. Side of that coin, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I was so addicted to RuneScape that it was all I cared about. Like I didn't. I was just in class thinking about getting home and ice barrage and people. Like that was just in my head all lesson long. I wasn't listening to anything aside from like maybe one or two subjects that I was actually in. Oh, no, no. To be fair, I I understand you because. Uh, elementary middle school i didn't care about grades either so all i did was play runescape too or, or hang out with friends right and and yeah if i saw a c i'm like eh, you know i mean deep inside i was coping right but like you know i didn't care at the time until high school but, bro yeah. do, do not right i know we're on the subject right now i'm yeah. gonna tell you this like small little snippet story i told my stream the other day well, last so, time he told us a story it was him shitting his britches in front of our <laughs> yeah, tree, so yeah. let's hear it uh, that, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to re-go to that one later right? yeah that, sure that one. We, we, can, we can do that. We can mm -hmm. do the after hours. That's <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so when I was in primary school, which is like, you know, between the age of like five to 12, I don't know what you guys call that, before high school. Elementary. Right? Middle school. Elementary school. Yeah. In, in, the final, in the final year, we have to take an exam called SATs, right? <laughs> and basically it determines what sets you get put into when you go to secondary school or high school. And at that point in time, I was just that kid that just, sat there i just wanted to go on my bmx and go outside like 
I wasn't paying any attention, but I remember my English teacher saying, if you can use the word melancholy in your <laughs> exam, you're going to do so well. And that <laughs> stuck with me. So when I did my test, I, I did the entire test. I can't remember what it was about. I don't remember any of it. But I just remember at the end of the test, I ended it with one word. Melancholy. Now that you sp- gonna put this shit somewhere did you spell it right? It, <laughs> Yo, that's well, a tough word to write. Was on a name slot, bro. Just like it. Because if I marked that paper, I'd have been like, okay, this kid's trying. Like he's trying. Melancholy. Like yeah, he's dumb as shit, man. <laughs> Can I add a little story real quick? All right. Okay. Bro, this is the last one. Then I got a question for Casey, of course. Uh, but, um, I was I was failing Spanish in, in like junior high, and I only knew how to count to like ten, like uno, dos, tres, whatever. And yet, okay, what's eleven? All these. Fuck. Um, well, I'll say it. You were close. You were close. Was I? And there was this thing, and we were you know filling it in, and I got to the number twenty-two, and I was just like, shit. So I put dos, dos. You know, so I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking, yo, what what could go wrong? And oh, I failed that. I got a talking to you. She didn't care about my creativity, bro. Dose, dose. <laughs> That's just called problem solving. Shit. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Duh, two, two. <laughs> the set of info I had. All right. So, Tasty, uh, before we started the podcast, you were talking. We were talking about PvP a little bit. And you said that you yep. would like to learn to get into PvP. I just want to I want to know why are you inspired by somebody? Do you want to clap some cheeks, dude? Um, just because I, I'm not kidding. Like me and me and a couple of my YouTube buddies, we will like sit down sometimes probably like once a week and we'll have like YouTube workshops where we'll go over, you know, video ideas we had during the week. We'll refine them. We'll like troll big YouTube channels and see if they have any video ideas we can copy. And as a result of that, we just have <clears throat> like this laundry list of PKing videos, like Torvesta oh. style frame style videos that we could make. That we think would be so fun, but all of us are just dog shit. We can't PK, <laughs> so like we, we, it would be it would be pointless. Like we wouldn't win anything. <clears throat> but yeah, it, it comes mostly from a place of content, and also because like that's that's kind of originally what got me into RuneScape was like the Torvesta videos, the PKing videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I think, I think sorry. Nine Rain's done a really good job of pretty much what you've described, by the way, because. He got into his like big series, um, which was a PKing series of getting a kill in every combat bracket. And mm-hmm. he started with absolutely like no experience with PKing. And the progression that he's made has been like phenomenal so far. Like he's really progressed if you go back to his early videos. And even you, Mint, you PK'd with him, didn't you? you yeah, yeah, I was him. teaching I was teaching well, all right, we'll, we'll cover that too here. All right. Um I was teaching him the basics, right? My old disciple. Nine rain, bro. Five yeah, bugs editing. It's all the editing. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta craft this man into a deadly weapon. And then he turns <laughs> his cheeks on me during leagues and slaps me with a ballista while I'm doing Callisto. And he's got that rapid fire, so it don't matter if I'm praying. Just twenty, 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 twenty. Like he sweaty shit, bro. He just drops me. I'm like fair enough, dude. So yeah, I molded that man. But uh, I, I love to see where uh, where he's at now. It's awesome. And I, honestly, those ideas, dude. Like I always have this this mindset of make what you watch right and yeah i'm watching something i want to make it because then i would know if i like it right it just kind of makes sense to me so yeah if feel free to invite me to that dms dude i'll see if you guys even with your set of skills bro i'm sure you can get a video out on on some of those ideas dude for sure Uh, we probably could we probably could and i'll I'll keep you updated for sure i would love to see that yeah i can vouch for man he does slap cheeks very often he does a lot lot of pvmers okay you gotta <laughs> yeah, he, he slayed some Iron Man's for their uh, barrel skiers. Are, so. are you the are you the people that fucking Reddit complains about? Is that you? I Honestly, should be. Probably, yeah. Okay. yeah. And you gotta yeah. go see me in Mad Cow's last video, dude. I literally commented on it saying, "Wait until Rice Cup hears about this," because in the video, <laughs> the guys are, like killing Iron Men for their flails and shit, and I'm like, yeah, oh, dude. My God. love it." Love yeah, it. he GG'd a few irons like barrel gear. Yo, getting that back sucks. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that, dude. Oh, God. Yeah. Tasty Not my battle. main purpose, uh, yeah. but if it happens, it happens, you know? It's the wildy, man. But yeah, to add on to what you just said, Tasty, about having a group of people behind you and your spitballing ideas and stuff. So an observation that I have made is that I know, um, I think the guy's called Mofo. He's a friend of yours. And I think he yeah. edits 
your videos, correct? Yeah, he edits most of them. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was just wondering, like, do, do you have like a, a team of people that are behind you, like trying to help you make content and stuff like that? Like, what what's the dynamic here? Are you paying no. these people? What's happening? I, <laughs> I pay Mofo. Yeah, he he edits for oh. me. But oh, he's good. Uh, he's good. Yeah, he's good. yeah. No, he's he's definitely good. But um no i mean so i i I just have a very close group of friends i guess in my my stream team all my stream buddies a lot of them do youtube as well um and we just find that it's you know pretty mutually beneficial for all of us to just kind of spitball ideas like we'll we'll literally we'll get together and we won't even think of video ideas we'll think of like titles and thumbnails just things that are catchy like that we'll think of those first and then we'll like flesh out the video from there just because, you know, like, I, I consider myself more of a streamer at this point, but still, like, I, I just find YouTube very interesting. Um, just, like, the algorithm, what makes good content, kind of, like, the scientific part behind it. So you can have the best video in the world, but if your title sucks and you don't have a thumbnail, like, no one's going to click on it. Oh, absolutely. So it's, yeah. yeah, so there's, there's just kind of a whole creative process that uh, we just like exercising with each other, I guess. That's also awesome. so, so yeah. basically just a group of you like mates just chatting about you know yeah I, I will say what you said there I think is spot on because I've had similar <clears> conversations <throat> with like framed yeah too, where it's like like I speak to Kevin about this and Kevin's like I literally have the title and thumbnail before I get the content and yeah. I'm like what that's what you should like, do yeah that's like the good. way to do it yeah like he has the vision. Uh, I, I'm kind of guilty sometimes of like getting loads of footage, and then I'm like, man, what am I gonna make this thumbnail? What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, so, I, mean, I feel I, that, I, I, bro. That's that's a it's hard, dude. Good thumbnails yeah, are very. That's difficult. my biggest weakness, dude. I'm out here making like I'll hunt in certain areas, and be like, okay, people want to watch outside of rev caves, and I'll be like, what the fuck do I call this? Like dungeon exploring? Like I have no idea what the title okay, any of this. And so <laughs> yeah. it's my biggest flaw, and I hope to one day overcome it. But for now. I don't know. We're, we're trying. Yeah, well, it's, man. it's like a muscle. You gotta exercise it. You know, you gotta you gotta strengthen. You gotta practice. That's the only way. Yeah, and honestly, though, there there is beauty in when you just tie a video and just like you just go with it. You don't think much about it. Although, yeah. obviously, the growth you know is limiting. But I do miss those days, right? Because there was a time on YouTube where I could literally just title, uh, you know, like Iron Man episode one, and then literally do that a hundred times, and it was fine. Because then people would be like, ah, oh, click on it, you know. But it's like so different. Man, you, really, yeah. worked, you really have to survive so differently on youtube man because like i yeah. did a series for like three years which is making one bill start as level three and then making max cash start with tebow and that was the title with a number at the end for three years <laughs> and, <laughs> and the thing is like the algorithm kind of just knew what it was and people kind of expected that content from me so whenever i uploaded it, it's like i still had a bunch of people coming through and watching it um and yeah i recently finished that series so i've kind of been taking the approach now which is way more creative like trying to think outside the box and thinking like what is the thing that people want to see right now like what's doing well in the community and all of that like it it kind of like forces you to be in that kind of creative headspace right where you're like you, you gotta brainstorm like you gotta think yeah. like what is the thing right now that people want to see um but dude to go off of that and your group of friends so you actually have your own podcast that you started up uh, called yeah. the Based Podcast. Right? The Based After Dark like Podcast, it. yeah. That is that uh, is correct. I like that name. I, I've got so many questions. Because, like, <laughs> have obviously... Have you listened to any of it yet? <laughs> I, I've watched some of them. Yeah, it's, I have. I, we get I, a little I, rowdy. We get a little rowdy. So, so that's, <laughs> like... I, I got a bunch of questions along this line. So, firstly, <laughs> there's four or five of you that host it. Is that correct? There's yeah, like a, we have a rotating list of like probably six or seven of us that kind of sub in and out depending on, you know, who's free. And then we'll bring on a guest or two sometimes. Yeah. So we have like, we ha we try to structure our podcast in a way where, and we're, we're guilty of doing this. We, we really mm -hmm. try. We, we've kind of like understood now that having free brains is really difficult to have a conversation without tripping yep. over each other, especially with like the latency with uh, discord. Like it's only as good as it can be. I'm out in the UK. These boys are in America. Um, so I was just wondering, like, do you guys have like, like a rule of thumb on that podcast where you try not to like talk over each other? Because like on this podcast, what we try to do is as soon as I hear somebody talking, I try and silence. I'm mm -hmm. just like, I I'll pause myself. 
and I practice that, like to try and not just have like a, a mess of a podcast. So yeah, I was we've been, we've been getting good at that too. That's a very good question. I like that question a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it kind of goes back to the the origin of the podcast. So all those people that we all host with, uh, for a long time, for like six months, we all were in just Discord together every night, playing video games, you know, talking shit, just letting loose, basically. And a couple times throughout, the, you know, those several months, you're like, this would be like a hilarious podcast if we just, hmm. you know, if we just record ourselves <laughs> talking right now, <clears throat> like people would love this. People would listen to it. And we just thought it'd be kind of a fun idea, but we never actually like pulled the trigger on it. And then one day we were like, you know, let's just send this. It's good for like us. It's fun. We enjoy it. It's good for, you know, our brand as like a stream team. Um, <clears throat> and as a result, like we have, we have no structure. We have no plan. <laughs> we have no rules. We don't even, <clears throat> one person records it, right? They don't tell anybody when they start. Like we just start talking to each other and then they will pick a point and they'll just start recording so that like the cold open starts awesome. and we have um, like a okay. launching pad. <clears throat> and you know, there, there have been a few times where we've had to like edit out uh, silences for a little bit, but as we've like kept on, you know, making more podcasts, we've gotten a lot better at just the general flow of it. Um, and at this point, yeah, we don't like we have we have no plan. We just go in and, and we talk and we just let the conversation go. We pretend it's like our late night Discord conversation. Like, yeah, that's why it's mm -hmm. called After Dark is because you know we we film it at like three in the morning. Like you know, that's to when we start to add to that, uh, I've noticed from you know our 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 side of it is that like. Obviously, you guys have a nice flow of friends that you, you've already, you understand each other's kind of like habits of, mm -hmm. you know, talking and whatever. So, you yeah, know, freestyling exactly. is pretty, pretty good. I think for us, it's usually not a big deal if it's just us three, you know, because we are very used to how each other want to, you know, when, I know when each of us tend to want to jump into a convo, right? It's the yeah. difficult part is when we, uh, uh, for a while, we, we try to focus a lot on guests. And when you throw that hidden mechanic in there, it, it's, it gets really confusing because then it throws everybody off. And that's probably our, our hardest challenge, right, throughout the years is when we have a guest, yeah. how do we mesh that in? Because some guests, you know, they, they are very talkative and others, you know, you really got to prod them. But, like, we can't adjust it co properly because then it's three of us having to think about how to, you know when he should get in yeah, yeah no like I, I know what part. you mean like you definitely mm -hmm. you, you three probably have a lot of chemistry because you've recorded yeah, exactly. this podcast a bunch so you know each other pretty like when you bring a guest on it's just that's just one of those kind of adapting on the fly oh, scenarios yeah. it's not that easy makes it a good podcast like you know mm -hmm. once you know how to tackle that pretty well then you know the podcast yeah let, let's just say it's been a it's been a freaking mountain to climb you know but like yeah we're, we're getting there <laughs> we're getting better honestly we we've done so well though it used to be a little more chaotic now it's like oh way more it used to be way more down, you so guys are talk. doing great so far absolutely yeah, fantastic. I, I, I have like this like i'm almost traumatized right this was a long time ago like probably five years ago i don't even remember who the content creators who came on were but i remember we did a podcast with two dudes and we didn't have our dynamic down. We're just talking over each other and just <laughs> like, like it's just a shit show. And I remember at one point I looked, I actually looked at the Discord and I saw one of the dude's faces and I saw how unengaged he was. And he had the face of, I want to leave this as soon just as I like can. And on it the was phone, like hanging out. <laughs> like a little kid at a beauty pageant, just like, oh, just like, like yeah, that. and me. <laughs> And yeah, yeah I, I think I think you know that probably helped a little bit to be honest because I didn't Feedback. like seeing that, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah. we're doing something something wrong here. But That's um, fair. dude, so you're talking about uh not telling people when you're recording, which yeah. I think is great because some of my um IRL friends like we have conversations that go fucking wacky, and I'm there and I'm like, man, if people could like listen into this conversation, I think people would enjoy this. Like, we're yeah. talking about shit really honestly. And, you know, but the thing is, like, as soon as you say, I'm recording, guys, yeah. it's almost like a deer in headlight for some people. Like, exactly. As soon as, yeah. as soon as it's like that three, two, one, people are like, and they just seize up and, and they're not, they're not flowing like they were before. Yeah. I, I quite like what you do there. With not that's, telling yeah. Well, it's, yeah, that's entirely by design. You no, know, it's the whole point. And like, 
<sighs> I guess it's just being observed is what is weird. I think that's what throws people off is yeah. the fact that they are being observed. And I think part of the thing that helps so much is that all of us are streamers on the podcast. <clears throat> and that, I would say, is probably what makes us so good at being able to kind of judge, you know, when other people are going to jump into the conversation. Because we're used to, like, balancing, you know, talking to chat, talking to people that we're raiding with in Discord. And it's like, a, it's a whole balancing act. But, yeah, just practicing, like, being observed and being okay <laughs> with it is probably the most important part um yeah. to you know just being comfortable on something like a podcast yeah honestly i, I really i really like that yeah I'll, okay i i got some i got one one pretty uh pretty like encompassing question that kind of relates to all this you know like like you know work mm -hmm. ethic strats with how we do our work so um so of course you 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 like Rexy said kind of came out of nowhere right because it really caught me by surprise too i'm not gonna lie but honestly i think <laughs> you know you and, and your friends have done a really good job overall with your executions, you. Mm. you know, the marketing stuff, it's, it's been top notch. So I can see how you guys just really flew, you know, flew into the scene, like, like yeah, fast. Yeah, right? we've, we've been putting in a lot of hours. Now, now my question oh, is, you. my question is revolving around that is that, so what kind of work ethic did you have previous, you know, previous to getting into this full time, <laughs> right? Because Dude, I, honestly, I assume you might, because like, you know, th there's gotta be a confident thing, confidence thing, right? You must, you must have <clears> done something previously that you felt like, you know what, I, I'm a, you know, I, I can take I risks think he was a stripper, and I can make it work. And I, I could I be a stripper. Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, the question is simple. Well, not really, but like, it's, it's just <clears throat> what kind of history that you have to, that made you feel confident that you could try something like this. You get what I'm saying? Dude, or was I, it just like you changed as a person in that moment? Right? Um, that's that's kind of a difficult question, honestly. Yeah, it really like, is. I, yeah. I honestly don't think I've ever really worked that hard in my life. Like, I <laughs> oh, okay. Like, I, I work exactly as hard as I feel like is necessary to maintain the level of comfort that I desire. Like, I, mm. I, I don't want to spoke to me like, on a spiritual level right there. Yeah, okay. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> it's just kind of a mindset thing. Um, and when I find something I'm pat like I'm very passionate about streaming and about making good content. So if if I physically enjoy that process, then I will work a lot harder towards it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've I've always been the kind of person where if I do not have real intrinsic motivation, then I just don't care about it. Like I, I I will not do anything more than the absolute bare minimum if I, if I don't genuinely have, you know, intrinsic motivation or like it. Um, as for kind of what enabled me to be good. Okay. So the reason I kind of came out of nowhere, uh, is like the perfect storm essentially happened to me. Um, I had been making YouTube videos and streaming for maybe like a month at this point. And I want to say I had like you know, 2000 subscribers on YouTube. I started streaming so that I could like bring people to my YouTube ironically. And it's kind of reverse <laughs> at this point. Um, yeah. You know, I, I had like maybe 12, 20 viewers at this point. And after about a month of uh, streaming, I, I, I think the first person was, was exact. I had like 20 viewers hey, at this point. Right. And exact viewers, had, yeah. Yeah, Exact had found one of my, like, first videos, <laughs> uh, which was my How to MVP at Top video, which is, like, a very... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, people told me about of, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that. That, that was, like, my <laughs> first video that people, like, knew. And, you, it, like, that's still the video that a lot of people know me for. Like, I'll get first-time chatters in my chat and be like, hey, you taught me how to MVP. And I was <laughs> like, holy shit, it was two years ago. <laughs> um. But he, he found that video that was being shared through a bunch of like PVM discords. Um, and he came into my stream and he donated me $1,000 as part of his like creator challenge because he won the, uh, the, the, the Inferno Cape challenge from Bodhi. And Bodhi gave him like $10,000 or whatever. And Exact used that money to donate to newer creators that he liked. And I was one of those creators. So I had, I was like a 20 viewer Andy, 15 viewer Andy. <laughs> exact came in, donated me $1,000. The very next day, he raided me with, like, 2,000 people. The day after that, Settled raided me with, like, 2,000 people. And literally from that day forward, you know, I had 400-plus viewers on Twitch. 
So it wasn't like wow. I grinded. Yo, but you had there. you had staying power though, because like you know, some yeah, people yeah. get rated with a few thousand yeah. viewers, but it doesn't stick. But I I, I guess you know. <laughs> You were a hidden gem, right, to the community in a way. It was, yeah, like yeah. I said, it was it was the perfect storm. I think I was in a in a good place to kind of capitalize off of the newfound viewers. I was trying to be extremely consistent. Like I streamed every day for like a month when that happened, and then by the end of the month, I felt like complete dog shit, and I wondered why. And I was like, <laughs> oh, because I'm super burnt out. Like I need to take days off. I forgot about that. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. yeah. Was, just a whole it was a storm and i you know i did my best to capitalize off of it and it and it worked thankfully <clears throat> but like it was just it was just a lot of things coming together at once okay yeah. so you scale your effort based on your passion right one second that's a quick one yep. well, you scale your effort based on the passion right so let's say yeah. pre before uh, as a consequence did you would you say this is the most you, effort you've ever put into anything like overall or or like was there something else yeah. previously that like no oh, I, okay. I would say this is yeah this is definitely because like every every job every thing i did before this um like even in college like i really enjoyed some of the classes that i was taking in college mm -hmm. I, I studied theoretical linguistics <laughs> in college that's what my degree is in i have a degree what is in that, that. <laughs> what is um that? What even is i don't that? know dude. <laughs> i don't know i i wish i could tell you it's the study <laughs> <What> of <laughs> <laughs> it's the study of language as a science but there are like there are like eight different branches Wait, so you were ba basically if we came across aliens you could probably uh you could you, you know, have a head start bridge i'm gonna i'm gonna say yes i'm just gonna say <laughs> okay. yes and then That's honestly yeah. incredibly fascinating i was always thinking about like where language devolved from and certain tribes it is, with it's dialects a, it's very like, fascinating like right? memes and i loved it you know, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's like sociolinguistics. That's yeah, oh, that's very okay. much part of linguistics. But, just real quick, I want to say exact. This is the wrong exact. Sorry, that guy does not watch me. I, I forgot about the speedrunner. I, I get watched by a guy named E G G Zag. So it's literally egg. <laughs> for fuck's sake, dude! I was like, it's my viewer. And I'm like, oh no, that's the speedrunner guy. I'm a dumbass. Just wanted to throw that out there before dude, he's like, oh, Mitt Mac, I'll watch that motherfucker. He's you know? like, yeah. You know the mint's been sat there for like the last five minutes just thinking, why is this guy not doing it? <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute. No, that's not him. <laughs> All right, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, that was um, wait, so that's all. You studied the evolution and understanding of how humans communicate. Is that is that like a the science way of, of summarizing? Language, yeah. yeah. The, I so uh what most of my classes were were syntax classes. Which, if you're familiar with computer programming, it's like that, except for <laughs> language. It's the underlying grammatical structure of language. We can go on this tangent. I'll, I'm happy to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to hear it. Yeah, after like, the race like, stuff, uh, maybe. When I yeah. say this grammar. It's very interesting, but yeah. we should probably jump into race three and then. After, yeah, you finish, on, you finish okay, your okay. thing here. Yeah. yeah, you finish yeah, your okay, thing okay. and then we'll do the. Yeah, I'll finish the tangent. So, like, yeah. uh, when people, when I say grammar, people think of like the different theirs and like your and your. Uh, but what we studied was like the underlying patterns of why people structured certain languages certain ways. Like if you if you found like a like a small child who was just starting to learn language, um, and he saw like a red car with like a fat man in it, the the kid wouldn't say like red man fat car there. Like he wouldn't mess it up in that way. Like there's some sort of underlying structure in the brain that makes the kid say red car fat man. Like he would, he would mess it up in that way. Like it wouldn't be grammatically perfect, but like you would understand what he was saying. So like we, it was basically like that. We were trying to understand why that happened. <clears throat> that's, Dude, that was that's, a beautiful. That's, yeah, honestly, I, I could totally wait, understand. Wait, I totally wait, wait, get that. I totally get that. We should, we'll totally d dive into it more because I got some yeah, I, 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 personal I've got stories. More, you know? I've got one more Q and A question. All right, all right that's, it, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Okay, this is this is the final one. So, uh, I checked out your last video, and. Um, oh. I was, dude, same thing with Solo Mission, bro. It's like, I didn't realize that you're doing the series until I saw your last video. And I was like, wait, no. hold up, this dude's doing the same fucking thing as me. Again. Everybody's doing that thing, dude. Guns <laughs> Chili's doing it, I'm doing it, you're doing it. Rice Cup uploaded a video saying he's ready for Raids 3. It's, it's all the content right now. Um, yeah, because we don't have Raids 3 yet. Dude, you, yeah. you, you should, should know I'm when it comes it. out. Yeah. Man, Mint was trying to get onto our day one. A no, 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 no. 
dead ass. And he's like, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be drunk, <laughs> man. man. I think no, it'll be good content. We're like, we're not I taking you, bro. how sweaty these guys are. They got, like, a little calendar and a fucking circle and shit around that. Oh, yeah. My viewers bought me some Jack Daniels. I was like, I'll try her out. I'm like, hey, guys, do you want to do, like, a podcast? You know, we get our first spots. I, didn't, I forgot these guys are, like, fucking sweaty. They got their mouse ready, their DPI <laughs> settings going. My bad, boys. All right, I'll be... Dude, I'll be getting we're, stocking laid up on, we're stocking up on two liter bottles, mate. We're getting like, oh, yeah. all of I've this. I've got my raid bucket ready, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. in that in that intro, um, you're talking about your balls. Like something's what? going on with your testes. Oh yeah, I've got a <laughs> testicular injury right now. I'm, oh. I'm currently healing from. Mm. <laughs> how, how do we want to know how that happens? Like I wish, this? I wish <laughs> I could tell you that a, a hot dummy mommy was stepping on my balls, but that's that's not what happened. I just, <laughs> I tossed and turned in my sleep and just whoop, just one day. Wow. Oh, no. Got some hangers, huh? Was that a yeah, nightmare or some, what? Just, got some large testes, size of grapefruits. So. <laughs> Wait, you, so you um, effectively like crushed your nuts on your leg in the night. So what happened? I can give you the medical thing. So like, Let's go go. I'm get like, we're guessing this is what happened. Cause I was asleep. I obviously don't know. I woke up and they hurt. Um, <laughs> but I have something called a hydro cell. So apparently what happened is like there's a membrane around your testy, right? Mm. And when I like tossed and turned in a weird way, it like sheared the membrane off. A oh bit. my god. And it just there's like a little sack of fluid in there. Ooh. And that's that's all it is. But it like it fucks up your whole lower torso. Like all my muscles down there are like messed up. Like a, it gave me like indigestion. Like it's just the weirdest, weirdest symptoms. I thought I had stomach pain for three days. I thought I, I ate something bad. But no, the testicle thing. Yeah, I want to like it's so hard to get into raids three content with such compelling. Yeah, stuff. Like, <laughs> we, we haven't even in, touched dude. on raids. Three, yeah. Oh my god, bro! Uh, yeah. Oh, this will be so a wait, nice last after. It's, a, my, it's okay. My grandpa can wait. It's fine. I'm just dropping him yeah. something off. We can. Mm. So, go over. Yeah. Are, are you on the like? Are you on the road to recovery? Like, are your bulls feeling better now? Uh, how so are your bulls doing, man? They're feeling a little better, but the thing is, like, it it will never go away. Like it's Ooh. it's there forever, uh, and oh, my options man. are a <clears throat> deal with it and hope that eventually like it just heals enough to where I I don't notice it. It's very small, uh, or b I could get surgery on it, which is like kind of a nuclear option. <laughs> and, like they really don't want me to do unless it's absolutely mm -hmm. necessary because it's a terrible recovery. You can't walk for like a month. Oh my god! Um, and also it can make you infertile. So like they don't want to <laughs> do it. Jeez, yeah, yeah no. Oh my god. Nah. Sorry you're dealing with that, dude. Because yeah, for me, it's okay. It's it's pretty Yeah, who knew bad. sleeping could be just so dangerous? Like, you know? like, no, but that's one of my fears that I tell my friends. If you don't like I'm gonna tell them this story, right? Because I don't think yeah. your fear is my fear, but I always get afraid because like I don't know, as men learn from others. It's kind of natural to have like your hand just slowly go down there while you're falling asleep and just cradle, right? Yeah, yeah. But I like have to like remove my hand because I'm afraid I'm gonna have a nightmare. You know? <laughs> It's fucking insta crush, dude. Oh, and now yeah. I understand uh -huh. that it's 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 honest. Mint's a naturally strong grip, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Have to be crazy much, much strong for, for the gravy <laughs> beans. <laughs> If, if, if someone in your community isn't making like a meme of your bull sack in like a, a little cast, like holding it up or like uh, on a oh crutch God. or something, don't give him any ideas. Oh bro. God, don't it's it's, it's ideas, too late. Dude, Pandora's box. My Twitch <laughs> chat has been nothing but balls for like a month, bro. It's just. <laughs> Just your bull on a crutch, man. It, it, it probably doesn't help with recovery, you know? Honestly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, All right. Um, who wants three? to start to raise free content? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, yo, we got this video. Bro, we got this video playing. If, if anything, you know, I just let this play, and you can kind of just talk about it for a bit, so then we can go into the, all the tinfoil hats and you know, start meeting. Yeah. So it's definitely in the desert. That's what I picked up. It's, it's um, 100% in the yo, desert. Yeah, Tasty and Mofo made this video, so, you know. Yep. He knows. Yep, he knows what's in there. Very yeah, nice. we worked uh, pretty closely with Jagex Goblin. <clears throat> Goblin was a huge help on this. Uh, we worked with Arcane as well. Uh, Mod Ed helped us out a little bit. I mean, it took like several weeks of scripting and re-scripting because we like we had to be very careful about what we said, so we didn't either like misrepresent the lore, uh, misrepresent the mechanics. Like the wording is very very specific in a lot of these situations. And yeah, you kept um, saying. Yeah, you guys kept saying you had to be agile, agile, and you had to work together. Like for every yeah, boss, we, that was like what we, you said. We had a lot of descriptors <laughs> we were like egged on to use. So oh, it was, yeah, it was like um, the same thing for all the bosses. Did you actually have to sign an NDA? 
Yeah, or... yeah, I'm so you did. Yeah. So you are. Be careful with very, what you say. Yeah. <laughs> we'll cut yeah, out anything. Um, we'll cut out stuff. <laughs> yeah, if, if I say anything too spicy, if there's a cut, you guys know. We'll definitely uh, cut everything out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Okay. But like, we didn't we didn't play test it, so um, <laughs> I don't really know the mechanics. Like, I know all of the invocations. I've seen all the invocations. I've read them. Uh, but I still don't know what a lot of them are because I don't know the actual mechanics, so I don't know how they're going to be like actually affected. Um, but it was it was a really fun process working on this video. It was really cool. We got to sit down in Discord, um, and like literally the J mods took us through like every room in Raids Three, like every like the the puzzle sections or whatever before, um, and we got to see everything super early, and it was it was really really cool. Yeah. Even the end game boss, did you guys get a peek at that? We did not see the end game boss. We don't even oh, know what they are. Dang. Okay. Yeah. The yeah, only people who know maps. about that are playtesters. So. Oh. Okay. 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 So, do you fall into uh, one of the <clears throat> people? Because I spoke to Solo Mission recently, and he is not allowed to play with other people <clears throat> on day one of release. Uh, because I am of the allowed NBA. to play. You are allowed, I am to, allowed play. to play. Yeah, because because yeah. I've I didn't test any of the fights, and I don't really know the mechanics. So. The solo tested the fights. Yeah. Yeah. Solo. Yeah, actually yeah. Played Physically. Solo played it. Yeah. Very nice. The neck wheel coming in. I like it. No more yeah, day not, one videos. Us, yeah, he can't make a day oh. one video. Yeah, Addy <laughs> Khan was going to be on our team, but uh, he he wasn't allowed to stream, and he wouldn't have been allowed to like tell us any of the mechanics or like help us at all. So he eventually was like, "Yeah, like just just yeah. replace me. Like it's not going to be fun." Yeah, yeah, it would have been awkward. Gotcha. gotcha. So yeah, what, so what Mod Goblin mean? though, the J God down there. That man's nah, fixing PVM. And PvP, dude, the same yeah, goblins. Dude. He's all encompassing. Goblins, the homie, dude. Like, he, holy shit. Um, I don't know if this is leaking. Sorry, sorry, Ben, but uh, he <laughs> was. Uh, he's mildly entertaining. He's the guy who also ran all of the method sponsorships for RuneScape. Like he was the he worked for Method. He was the liaison oh, for becoming a, okay. uh, a JMod. So That's I actually nice. I had talked to him, uh, like when I first started streaming, like three months into me starting streaming. Uh, cause method was interested in like, uh, signing me to their, their content creator thing, which at the time, since I was so new, I was just like, I really wanted to keep everything just, you know, by myself. I didn't want to sign any contracts. I didn't even want to take any sponsors. Like I just wanted to be completely myself and grow naturally. Looking back, I wish to God I signed that thing, dude, cause <laughs> I would have gotten the, um, uh the premium partner split on twitch which i don't have because they're not giving it to anyone anymore but yeah. like ah oh, dude that would have been so clean they're like premium, they're, is they're like taking subs? yeah, yeah it gives have... you a better it gives you a better sub split they don't do that no more oh i locked mine in dude so dude early. they yeah, if, if you streamed a while ago then like you probably got it but they don't I, like, I'm glad I, aren't, aren't they i had the message uh mm. back in the day you had a partner uh manager i guess for like every yeah, two or three yeah, streamers real. and like you could you can't do that no more yeah, i was yeah. i was harassing that man <laughs> yeah you know like I, oh. I think they're trying to take some of the split back from like those people I heard. yeah so yeah. that, that yeah. is the rumor and yeah based on some people that i've talked to i am fairly sure that they are going to remove the premium partner split yeah uh, at some point maybe not in like the very near future but Within a year, yeah, the shareholders, you know, they're trying to get some more money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's that's, that's, that's why Twitch has been pushing ads so much. All those yeah, ad contracts, so ass, uh, is because they want creators to have another way to recoup the money. So we're not like super mad, but you know, we yeah, have no nah, it's not gonna be as like, good yeah. anymore. It's not. It's, I mean, it doesn't so affect sorry. me. But yeah. I'm so sorry to my chat, but I did take the five minute offer <laughs> because I literally I couldn't turn it down. I was, I was, <laughs> yeah. So true, sorry, true. chat. Hey, uh, man. Raise three, so also, when you were over there, what was the the favorite thing that you've seen? Like it really stood out, and it just made a made something your brain get all happy, dude. Uh, the thing that kind of blew me away the most was actually the animation on Kefri. Looking at the the boss, like the, the Kefri boss. Yeah, the bug, the bug on the ball of the ball of dung. The dung. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> the shit I boss. Don't yeah, the shit pause. I don't think this is like a leak. I think I can tell you guys this. Uh, they switched to a new animation software at Jagex. Oh. Um, and cool. so, like, yeah, they're doing things that they could not do in any other on any other encounter. Like, not even at Nex were they using this. So, there's a lot mm -hmm. of things in Raids Three that have like a completely new animation engine. 
uh, and they they like, you can look tell incredible. that. Mm. Like, that gives me hope for the really Wildy Boss. Sick looking stuff, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like they can do super cool stuff with the Wildy Boss. So, so like when you you know when you're looking at these animations though, like the, do they make like you know like the gameplay when you're going against it? Does it? Do you think it enhances the gameplay experience? Like it makes it uh, easier to kind of like like um, walk into kind of like reacting to it, or <clears throat> is it kind of like harder? You know, that's a that's a pretty good question. Um, it's definitely more visually striking, which <clears throat> I think for a lot of players is actually something that's fairly important. For me, I don't hugely care about that. Like I, I use HD, the, the 117 plugin, yeah, for like baby. a week. Yeah. I use it for like a week, but then like everything felt too crowded to me when I was PVMing. So I turned it off because I didn't yeah. like <laughs> the shadows. I didn't like the weird lighting. Like it was just, yeah. it was too much for me to look at. Sure. <laughs> Uh, but I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case with um, any of the Raids 3 things that I so saw. So it's just going to look saw it. We saw it on the C++ mm. client. Because <laughs> that was the only thing they could run it on was their in-house client. Uh, yeah. Like, they weren't showing us uh, on, like, RuneLight or anything like that. Ooh, okay. um, and everything still looked, you know, incredible. Even without, like, GPU plug-in, anti-aliasing. Like, everything still looked really good. So <clears throat> I think overall it's, it's, a, it's a large positive. For sure, and they're gonna apply that stuff to other future content. Yeah. I'm sure. Oh, for sure, yeah. man. Um, <clears throat> is there anything you can tell us that is not shown directly on this video, and it's not does not or comments go into on this your video. NDA, or, or maybe it's on the video. edge of your NDA, or maybe you break it, dude, or you know whatever you want to do. Yeah, right? break you know, the NDA. Not here. <laughs> um, I won't tell him. I won't tell him. I don't really think so, because the only thing like we didn't really show um, is the entire list of invocations. Uh, that was in the first cut of the video, actually, was a quick scroll through there every single invocation, um, which they, they like went back and forth between wanting to do. And then they ultimately settled on just showing uh, like the really general invocations that just affect like there's one that, uh, you know, affects the time, the number of lives you have, like they're OK with showing those. <laughs> um but... Is that kind of like when you play Smash Bros, you can choose like items on off? It's, it's similar so do you know how the okay. invocation system works it's from, from that expensive, analogy man. a bit yeah so, so it's it's basically every single invocation adds raid level to the raid uh which increases your loot potential essentially um and i want to there are a lot of invocations i'm not going to say how many but there there are a significant amount of invocations it looks like so. a lot <laughs> Yeah, no, there's there, a lot there, of there people getting tattooed. Quite a few. That's all I'm saying. Like, look at this scroll Why thing. Tattoos. This scroll is only a third of the. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like that times yeah. three. You <laughs> know what it the... kind of reminds me of, by the way? It kind of reminds me of um, like the relics that they had in the I was, about, I was thinking yeah. that, dude. Yeah. Right now, I was thinking similar. that. I, oh, I, think that's, I think it's nice that they're like reusing that concept in like visual idea <laughs> because. It, it looks to me. It looks like a spitting image of like when you choose your relics. It's yeah. nice to see that's not just a one and done, and they're reusing that kind of uh, stuff. Honestly, but I love I this think layout. It's very intuitive as I, well. Yeah, yeah. This layout is it's so much better than all the leaks stuff they they've had. I, I'm sure they've really streamlined the UX on this thing because because yeah. when I saw I mean, this, I I, yeah. When I saw this, I automatically knew how the rewards worked. Yeah, like you see, yeah, you no, see these. It's so good. Yeah, like like this this for example, you see how like um there's these four items that glow. That means that when it's like zero level, that you can get those four. And then like you see how it changes when the level goes up low. When it's one sixty five, everything else pops up. So it's like super easy to understand. So I I think a question that I have for this, and like I'm I'm guessing you probably don't know this tasty, and this is more just of an observation and a thought here, mm -hmm. is when you look at the chambers of Zeric. Like the highest potential you can get for getting a reward, I believe, is like eighty percent, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe it caps at eighty percent, so that's the highest percentage chance you can get of receiving a unique item. Now, I guess my question about this is: Do we think that it's going to be possible to guarantee a unique item, or yeah. do we think it's going to be similar to that eighty percent? Is that something we know, or is that just a guess that you're probably? Um... This is like a guess with 99% accuracy. There's no <laughs> double items and there's no guaranteed loot drop. Um, right. Cause yeah, the way the invocations work is that zero is uh, entry mode or whatever. 
at 150 raid level it's normal mode and then at 300 it's expert mode uh but it goes all the way up to 600 or like 595 yeah like you can mm. you can double expert mode um and that's also yeah. something else i wanted to talk about was like a race to to world first um that kind of i guess bridges on the invocations yeah the world first levels <laughs> the world first completion is whoever goes in first yeah like it's yeah you, like there's you, not you gonna be a race for the first person to complete it but um i'm assuming there will be there will be like standard meta setups for invocations to kind of min max how difficult it is versus loot potential um okay. so i think like i would love to see a genuine world first race and i don't know if jagex has any plans to kind of facilitate that but <laughs> i was actually thinking of offering like a bounty like putting out a thousand dollars for the first team to complete a raid with all invocations on which may or may not be possible we don't know yeah it's potentially going to be quite difficult but, yeah, I uh, remember they said. Idea I, had. I remember they they were saying something like, "Yeah, if you max it out, it's like basically impossible to do." But who knows, right? They'll they'll yeah, probably Addy they'll probably have it. Thought it would be pretty if much Luke's impossible. has like siblings yeah. or something, you know, <laughs> to, like, a family pop up. Yeah, like because I imagine um, this doesn't seem like a very solo friendly content, even though you could, right? Because yeah, I mean, it's a lot. Solo boom. Yeah, a lot it's of these not designed to be though. Yeah, exactly. A lot of these invocations. If you, I mean, I imagine the higher you go, the more beneficial it would be to have an organized team. I, I imagine, right? So, yeah. so yeah, you would you would need like a really like uh, on top of just being good yourself, you also need everyone that is equally as good and can also have that synergy level to actually overcome all these, you know, handicaps that you're gonna get. Yeah. Because like it's yeah. not just handicaps too, right? Because like the levels themselves also will boost the monsters' HP stats as well. So yep. you get the handicap and an increasingly higher static monster. So it's like more than yeah. what you yeah. think. And I okay, I think I can share this because it's not in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. But originally, having health go up were like separate invocations. Like it was certain rate points to add ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent. And they would like stack on top of each other. So it'd be like 500% if you had everything turned on. <laughs> um, but uh, one, of the one of the play testers turned on all the invocations except for health. So they just had super low health, but the mechanics were crazy. So they would just go in and like one shot the whole thing. And then Jagex was like, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so they just made the HP and stats scale with a uh, raid level, which I think is a, a much smarter way to do it. Yeah, and, who, and, uh, who and, all was there when they were testing it? The the race three, uh, solo know. mission, Jack R S, Adicon, and I think one more person. What was it? Was it Tukum? Well, like you people from the UK, no. basically, they were like UK creators. Yeah, because yeah. they had to go to the mm -hmm. Jagex office. Yeah, oh, I'm oh, just thinking like, so we're gonna deal? get this podcast out before mm. race three hits. Yeah, and. I feel like people will be watching this podcast to learn every single detail about Raids 3. Uh, Tasty, I don't know if you want to give like a quick overview of everything that's been out so far. Just like, I mean, yeah, I, I can. Is just incredibly just knows nothing. Well, if you want to speed around <laughs> the video, I can just keep moving it along and you can like explain some stuff, you know, if you want. Um, okay. That's yeah, so the, yeah, the video that we released is, uh, right I think, everything that Jagex wants to share before uh raids three and there's not much more that i know that's not in the video <laughs> uh besides like a couple really niche things like i know okay i'm not gonna say what it is but i know <laughs> what the purples look like like i know what it looks like when you get an item oh Wait, you, the graphical you the, is it gonna be purple of no no I, i'm just purple. calling it i'm calling it a purple as like a blanket right. statement because people identify with that they know what that is um mm -hmm. <laughs> when you get a purple it's fucking cool. That's all I'm gonna say. It's just, like, <laughs> okay. You're, it's you're, so I know. Cool, okay. Bro, he's it's saying definitely an animation. It's definitely. Oh, a very I'm not nice saying. Animation. Yeah, he's saying it's gonna, gonna be better. Purple. It's gonna be better than top and and rates purple. Yeah, well, dude, when you go into a freaking it's just static room, it always looks purple. It always yeah yeah it like, does oh, yeah. And then we're like ah oh, no, it didn't. It's yeah, because like you're right you because. Tell. Yeah, you're right, because when you go in the room for a split second, you think you see a purple, but then you get closer, yeah. the purple dissipates. You're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I you feel like you can tell. Been, yeah. TOB should, I feel like TOB should have been a red light 
just to go with like blood or something because Dude. if this raid is different it's like that's weird because you've got two raids that are purple and then one raid that is something else it's yeah. like it seems a bit weird like tob being purple as well no i always thought there should be it should have been animation to like actual movement animation that would show and then obviously something that stays right after yeah. i assume yeah, this yeah. is gonna finally very have something clear yeah. A very, there is a very clear visual indication that your team yeah. has received a purple. Like, Finally, honestly, it only I, bro, it only but, took three waits, but we did it. You know? <laughs> it <laughs> oh yeah, seven years. Uh, Rice, I like your idea of explaining the video though. If you can go back to that area where it shows the the town, oh, yeah. I, yeah, right there. Like, what in the hell? I I don't know if this is already basic ass. It's info, it's here. It's, like it's in the game, bro. It's in the game. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> it's in the game. From the the prerequisite Tasty. quest, they added this. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I, I'm gonna yeah. apologize. On behalf teach, of yeah, teach this a peak care. If okay. the update, if if the update isn't in the rev cave, this Boy. man knows nothing. This man with his hand use a peak care. Oh, right, we gotta, yeah. you gotta be yeah. gentle and you know you gotta. Yeah, leave. teach the. Stroke my ego. Please. Yeah, teach the uh, taller. What this is. We're guiding about. the. Yeah. We're guiding the blind here. Okay. okay. We got, we got strive so that's it. So that, that's already in the game. Then that big old block is where the. Uh, that is marketing the is good. That is a that's Okay. That's marketing. Yeah. I've seen. All right, well, let's get deeper in the video then, because I'm All sure right. there's so many here that didn't come out of Quest. Okay, so those are the um, the rooms. Yeah, so the, the general layout that? of the raid. Yeah. These are the paths. These mm -hmm. are the paths. Um, there's like a big, like the big center room is called the Nexus, uh, and the way it's organized is that there are four paths branching out from the Nexus, and you can do you can do them in any order. But you have to complete all four before you go to like the bottom level, which is the final boss. Mm, um, final each path boss. has like a puzzle room at the start or some sort of challenge that you need to complete to access the boss. Um, and there are indications that affect the puzzle rooms, there are indications that affect the boss, uh, there are indications that affect like the greater raid as a whole. And like everything just kind of scales up as you add uh, invocations. And it's a. Uh, yeah, like I, I can talk a little bit about the rooms, I think. For sure, we'd love that. Yeah, yeah like these puzzle, uh, puzzle yeah. These are so puzzle this rooms. Is, mm. These are yeah. This is like the the main the most puzzly room, I guess you could call it. Yeah. Um, I can't really say too much because there is a lot of this section we had to cut out because it uh, it showed too much uh, about like how to solve these puzzles. But yeah, essentially those are these are like six puzzles, and you have to complete all of them to like move forward um no i'm not gonna say that never mind uh <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. be careful <laughs> i have to tread carefully on your this life is I on think the line this leads to kefri <laughs> which like i love kefri's room like i think kefri looks so that's sick. a duker it's so right cute there, too that's, that's the duker yeah that mural that's in the background oh, I so, so good. good i know i gotta cool. say out it's of so all humble. the updates artists Always come through, man. I um, never yeah, roast they, they the do, artists. Bro, they do. Always. Look at that bowl of wow. Yeah. And, and oh. like, like literally, like walking through this room and actually seeing this in action is it's insane. Like they did such a good job with this room. Oh, dude, man. I, so I'm I've got a question. I, I don't know if any of you guys know this. I, I guess I'll target you, Tasty. So, yeah. with the dynamic of this raid, like, do we know mm. if it's going to be like chambers where you have infinite lights? lives or is it going to be more like tob where you die and if you wipe you're out of the raid do we, do we know that much information yet? a a mixture a mixture of that so yeah that that has been like kind of leaked by accident but they also showed us the indications uh by default it's basically a mix of the two uh without any invocations you like you can just die and like keep going essentially like it won't kick you out of the raid or anything like that um, but if you die in a room, like you're out of that room until the room ah. is either completed or your team wipes. It's like TOB, but unlike yeah. TOB, it'll just put you back at that room and you can go again unless you turn on the invocations, in which case you can make it exactly like TOB. Yeah, I noticed uh, some of the invocations were like, uh, if you like meet this thing, you, you gain a life or some, something like like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the invocations that they've shown are like your team has like ten lives, five lives, three lives, one life. Yeah, yeah, things like that. Yeah. Uh, Rice, could you go back to that boss? I think it was a boss fight where it showed like the green waves coming forward. Oh no, I think that's the puzzle this one. one. That's uh, a puzzle. Yeah, that's yeah. a puzzle. Oh yeah. my god, dude, that looks yeah. so good. Yeah, this one, this one looks like a sepulcher style something. I'm, yeah, I'm excited yeah. For this oh, one I, I, I love, like, there. I'm good. 
I'm ready for this. Yeah, you're 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 ready for this. Right? <laughs> uh, yo, it just uh, makes uh, me think like something's waiting for me to beat my ass. You know? Oh, like, yeah. Past it. Yeah, the reverse it cheek is, slap. It is. <laughs> you know. No, the I'm just. Traps. Honestly, by the way, I got I, I got hmm. asked real quick. If you go back yeah. just a tiny tiny bit just before this clip, All it's right, like I'm a pineapple right. tree. Is there farming in this raid? I don't think. So. Do we do we know if farming I, is I in this room or not? Yeah, the skill farming. Yeah, because it looked like, like a will pineapple. You get, like, or will you ever get farming XP? I d- that thing. That, do you see the thing <laughs> on the screen? <laughs> it's like, up to us to guess. I don't. I'm, I'm gonna. I, I'm not a skiller, man. I don't want to train in my farming. Okay, I, release, I'm not gonna. Dude. I'm not gonna tell you what that is, but you'll be fine. Okay, you'll be <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> just God, just know that you'll be okay. <laughs> I, I was thinking, like, am I gonna have to like cave for 99? Bro, I, I do. I don't see a. I don't see a tool leprechaun. It's not farming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. You don't. You don't have to like. You know, throw any boot you or anything like that. And that that <laughs> yeah. crocodile right there that we're watching. I love this. this. I want this pet. Do we know if we're That's gonna a- get the transmog right. for this? Or no, is that I, a I secret? Think about that. Oh, but, um, I know they will because race one and two they did that. So eventually, yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, Runescape literally just tweeted that uh, we were talking about it before we started. Uh, the guns chili thing. I'll relink it down below. And it gives us a closer in depth yeah. view of the fight. And I gotta say, that fight looks wild. Looks yeah. Insane. I don't think this is this is leaking anything, but Adi Khan said this was his favorite fight. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, there's a lot of dodging in in, in uh yeah. yeah yeah. He said there are two fights uh that are like absolutely spectacular, and this is one of them. Oh man, I'm so I dude. I've got expectations, and I'm I need to like. Dude, from what I, mean, I know, like, they're high. My expectations are high. So yo, like, don't want to say and, and also, I, I do want to comment on the fact that this is actually, like, the first time that they've released a boss that actually kind of has an enraged sort of, like, natural enraged mechanic. Not Nothing that, like, <clears throat> oh, we bring in more people, it gets harder. It's something that we actually can kind of, like, it, it, in the game, it just naturally generates the difficulty right for us yeah right? it's you know, the first I, I, time it is the first time actually in my opinion it's actually been a massive subject of discussion with a lot of end game pvmers that i've been listening to and i i think one of the biggest concerns that i've heard from a lot of um like i i don't know if i'd say elitists but these are like speed runners people that are really into the end game content is with the um is, is it invocation sorry what the thing that yeah, you make invocation. part invocation Wow, um, look at that animation. Basically, yeah. they're concerned with there's going to be a sweet point where it's <laughs> like, this is what you select, and then going any further past this, there's going to be no point to it. And that that's a genuine uh, concern that these people have because they want it to be infinitely difficult, where it's like yeah. you're continuously rewarded, and it's not just going to be a case of somebody does the math and figures out, right, this is the sweet point, this is where you need to be. Um, and I was just wondering, like, how, how do you guys feel about that? Now, from something that you said earlier, which was it's border, they've said that it's going to be borderline impossible to defeat this raid with all of the invocations on. Mm-hmm. It kind of makes me feel as if that's the reality that's going to happen. If that's the case and it's like borderline impossible, then people are kind of going to have to be forced into that sweet spot to be able to complete it and get like the best percentage of loot, let's say. Yeah, no, that's 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 a decent worry, and I like I don't know for sure what's gonna happen, but like I said, there are a significant number of invocations, and just the fact that there are so many makes me think that it's going to be extremely difficult to pinpoint that like sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously, they haven't told us exactly how loot potential scales, but I imagine like one raid point just adds the same amount of loot chance um as any other raid point no matter how high or low it is um so that's it's a good question and i think that's a decent concern um but what i would kind of like to see is that <clears throat> there are different like invocation setups that are the meta for like speed running or something or for just like what you are personally good at what you enjoy yeah. Like tailored I, per person, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I would like to see like just a bunch of preset invocations, and I'm not sure exactly how much I can talk about regarding that. Um, but mm. there there will be some some wiggle room from what I can from what I can tell you. It's it's not going to be black and white like that. I don't think. 
yeah no it's it's we've never we've never truly had like even even in bosses yeah. that it's that's existed for years we've never truly had necessarily a scientific meta to do any boss but 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 like really though i think when most people think of meta, they just think of what is most popular right yeah in, in yeah. practicalness this is what people think is most popular will there be a most popular way of doing this probably after a while there'll probably be like two or three options uh depending on like group size and your you know your your gear setup things like that right i think those will always happen because that's just a na- i think that's just a natural way of you know when the content gets older we find yeah standards I, I actually, right? per- so it's I not personally, a big deal i personally think that if it's a case of like you know it's not just indefinitely harder with more loot I don't necessarily have a problem with that. Like you said, if you can tailor the raid and like hit the point cap to make sure you get like a decent or one of the best chances of receiving the items, I think that's kind of cool because it opens the door for multiple different metas. Because I I think that's something which gets a little bit tedious with just RuneScape as a whole, is that with every piece of content we've had so far, it's like you can either play hard or you can play regular. And by increasing that difficulty, it's not like you get to select which pieces are hard. It just is, right? Yeah. So then there's a meta which is solid and formed for that piece of content. Whereas like with this, let's say there's four or five different kind of metas you can choose that are going to get you in that same pool of max points. I kind of like that because A, it's going to take a long time for people to figure out which the metas are, which is always fun. You know, if content comes out on day one and people have cracked it like that, uh, a bit bad. of spark, <laughs> the spark of the new content's gone, you know? Yeah. So, so um, I'm interested to see, like, how this goes. I've got, I'm really excited right now. I'm scared, man. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be scared crying on day one on stream. Yeah, no, I'm, like, I am I think, though, yeah. honestly, the, the, the whole the whole idea of um, enraged mechanic finally kind of making its way to old school escape, I think it's a very healthy thing for the, the player base in general because the, the meta will continuously evolve because. Yeah. You know, people will continue to push the limits of how they can actually, achieve, you know, how hard they can actually do the content, right? So compared to other content, this will have a, a much more longer meta evolving kind of like process, you know, versus other yeah, content. Because no, like top that's, is that's static. actually, yeah, that was something that I was going to bring up is that yeah. what makes RuneScape PVM so unique compared to other MMOs is the fact that it's designed to be played for a long time for forever into the future as opposed to like a wow raid you play it for you know six to eight months and then you never play it again like runescape is very long form so there is a lot of like emergent gameplay as people get better they figure out new ways to tackle a boss like a year down the line we might figure out some sort of strat to completely trivialize a certain mechanic and so guess what you can turn on every invocation related to that mechanic now and it's free like there, there's just constant ways that will shift the meta uh, like that. So. Do you know what? Do you know what that reminds me of? Instant get flashbacks, and I, I know you didn't play at the time, but like when Vespula first came out in Chambers, it was like a, don't do it, bro. Like don't even go in that room. It's yeah. horrible. You got, you got to feed the grubs. It's a pain in the ass. Nobody had a T-bone. Knock it down. Now it's, it's like the easiest room in there. It's just yeah. like. Redemption, just redemption. Yeah. bro, bro. No, I, I remember, exactly. I remember how bad this feel is when I play on the hardcore environment because you can't redemption method it, so you have to constantly oh, knock so it. Dangerous, or what? yeah, oh. yeah, because you you lose yeah. a life if you if you fuck up your redemption. So you literally gotta knock it down and feed the grubs. Oh my god, that was so hard. <laughs> I, it was so bad. Like holy shit. Something yeah. as well that yeah. I, I'm like, I, I'm hoping this isn't the case. And I know this is your first time experiencing new content on release. So this is going to be awesome content. regardless for you. But like, Very I have excited. these, I have these memories of like when Chambers first came out and get, we spent like four hours getting to the third room and it was Vasa. And we just couldn't <laughs> oh, figure yeah. it out. So we're, we're just like, <laughs> Yo, leave. Yeah, everybody, every, everybody leave. Let's go in the <laughs> next one. Hope we don't get it. Um, There's no scout. We just went into it blind. And um, what what I'll say is like, obviously with this, and there's been a lot of a lot of talks about this. People are against it. People love it. Um, where they're basically making it so you can go in on easy mode on the day of release. And I know that a lot of people have said, you know, I, I'm concerned that that part of the new content might be missing because you're just going to be able to 
you know, experience all of the content on easy and then up yeah. the difficulty. So I, I guess my question is like, how how do you guys feel about that? Because I, I know that the um, you you can obviously raise the difficulty on this, and it's going to add hopefully new mechanics and things of that nature. But do you guys think that it's going to kind of diminish those like newbie first moments of touching a new piece of content, or or do you think that it's not really gonna it's not really gonna affect it that much? Um, in general, like it, it, it's a trade off, you know. I, I am somewhat of an elitist. Like, I didn't want entry mode to be added because I didn't want people to have free practice. Like, I really enjoyed that kind of element. Gatekeeping? The, <laughs> the true... Well, it's like the true MMO experience. You need to go in with your friends. You need to, like, you need to die. Because, like, that's how I learned, Tob. Yeah. Like, terribly. Yeah. With people who <laughs> suck. And it was a lot of fun. And it helped me build out, like, a solid web of people to PVM with. <clears throat> and, like, that experience was certainly like valuable and it was fun but at the same time like i can't really say that's the way that it should be um and i do think accessibility is important in a newer raid so i like i'm glad they have it like i, I think it's probably overall the right call but we are deprived very slightly of you know that kind of very classic mmo experience but overall like i i think they probably should have it yeah to yeah. to add on to that though um to add on to that so of course like you said it's tr it's a trade off right because like the moments where for example when when Wooks got to Zug for the first time and then he encountered like a random jet in the back and we had the iconic like what are you doing there you know like that yeah, moment you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah we're going to miss those moments for sure because of course on literally the first possibly 30 minutes of release some dude is going to go entry mode and we're going to find out what the last boss is, you know? Yeah. And we're going to see kind of like the core things. So, yeah, we're going to definitely lose that moment. But but I think it's an experiment for them, right? I think Jai is yeah. trying to figure out whether or not letting anybody, pretty much anybody, have the opportunity to try out their biggest content in years would do yep. to like kind yeah. of like their release week, right? Especially the first day because then everybody could rush in and give it a try even if it's like a kitty mode you know right you're still yeah. technically killing the boss so yeah. i i think they're taking a, you know a, a fairly safe risk here because there's surely something to be gained from from the way they're doing yeah, it yeah. right and the thing is like there's um <clears throat> i'm gonna try to say this very safely <laughs> uh but jagex did a really good job at kind of mitigating like you know the whole holy shit what is this kind of the surprise aspect uh, because yeah. entry mode is not the whole story. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, okay. like, I don't know yeah, if I yeah. can say much more than that, but it's yeah. <laughs> like, like the meta is not going to be set in entry mode like that's that, oh that's yeah oh i imagine because even like top entry mode like you you could cheese the whole fight and not use any yeah. brain cells to, <laughs> to actually clear it yeah. so yeah i imagine oh, yeah. yeah and i think I, they're going to be think... missing some things too right i think entry mode is going to be missing a bunch of different from Jagex's point of view yeah I, I think the like if you really try to put yourself in the shoes of Jagex, right it's like there hasn't been a new raid in about five years now. It might even be longer than that. Last one to come out with TV. This is hugely anticipated. They have worked and poured their heart and souls into this like they do with most of their content. And it's like, it's kind of like they've worked so hard on something. And the reality is, is that if there isn't the entry mode there, then this is kind of like, this is targeted towards like maybe the top like 10, maybe 20% of people that do PVM. And then the rest of the people that play the game don't even get to experience it. They watch like, the YouTube, you know? Man, if that's you go in like... <laughs> yeah, seriously, like, that's a thing, though. Like, I'll watch Let's Plays when they come out because I don't have the console, you know? That's like a new way of experiencing a game just by watching someone else play it. That's yeah. just completely true. I, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think you'll be amazed at, like, how many players and PVMers still haven't got, like, a TOB casing. That oh, thing's yeah, been out for yeah. five years. I, I kind of understand Noobs. like the gatekeeping is pretty hard, and but but it's not like yeah, intentional gatekeeping, <laughs> really. No, nah, you guys carried me in TOB, remember? No, we died. Case. We failed. No, we died. <laughs> we, 
<laughs> didn't, we didn't finish that shit? No. Oh, we died on, like, like, suck, dude. <laughs> we died on P2 or something, man. But, oh, no. you know, y'all supposed to but, carry me, dude. No, Racy the died. Is, and then I, I was by myself. Uh, I can't do anything. No, no, he died before I died. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mint died. Dude, must, of course, of course like, I'm going to die. You were supposed <laughs> to be... If I'm going to take you in the wild, I'm going to care for you. Right? See, this is... Uh, your little egg? Man. I was not your little egg. You cracked that bitch second boss in, bro. You think guys... Yeah, that's this okay. is this is why we're not taking Mint Mad Cow to <laughs> the chambers. This new raid when it's released, this man can't even remember if we killed Verzik or if we died. Like he's gonna I be know. drunk on top of that. He was sober, <laughs> sober last time. There ain't no way you're joining our team, dude. Like you can. I watch bet you can do side. entry mode. Don't listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how I get treated around here, Tasty. See how I get treated around here. Ridiculous. Yeah, no, him, no, him and Mint have, have a thing. First item entry mode. Watch Marauder's face. When we've got the hang of it, we'll take you. Okay. When we got the hang of it, but like we are gonna be sweat lords on the first. Well, I was gonna say when you brought up the um, raids Swap one bets. day one, I I don't know if I was in the same Discord call as you, but I was with a bunch of content creators, DVS, Mika. Yeah, and yeah. We hit that. that yeah, 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 yeah. And I was gonna say that boss that is no one cares about was just dumpstering us, dude. It would just randomly <laughs> teleport you. I'd be yelling, "You were chosen, insta dead, bro." <laughs> you were chosen. <laughs> Yo, that was literally my team too, bro. Four hours deep, and then we all died in one shot. We. We left the raid, and that was it you for can't, the day, dude. Yeah, you can't do it after that. Like, it's yeah. just no it's way. Ridiculous. The, mor- you know, the morale back, just dropped to zero. <laughs> back, back to the original point. I, I think yeah. <clears throat> at, at this point in time, all we know is the way that Jagex have released content in the past, which is the original without an easy mode, right? So yeah. we actually don't know if this is going to be a hit or not. Like, so I think it I, will I, mostly be a hit. Yeah, I, I think so too. I, I'm hoping there's still going to be enough that's special about it that I will look back on it in a few years down the line and think of it like the same way I think about Chambers and TOB. You know? Yeah. I, I think I will as well. Yeah, I so I, I th- the reason why I think this will be mostly a success is because for the first time ever, right, like anybody can basically try out this, uh, you know, this raid. Even though, it, even though it's most likely kind of like a demo experience, right? But it will definitely get a lot of people playing the game it'll have an insane concurrent player base for that day because not only is the usual people going to do it everybody and their mom's going to try and do it right just to get a get a you know scratch of it and, and the best part is this raid has an near infinite scaling right because towards the end of that scaling is pretty much impossible so you're going to have people even if more people do that raid than before like two one and two it doesn't really matter because people can keep pushing it and pushing it and even if you had that extra group of people trying to push it, it probably still won't reach the cap anyway. So, so it's going to feel, you know, no one's really going to complain that like, oh, everyone's doing it. It's too easy or whatever. Because like, it doesn't just get easy. It, you can make it harder and harder and harder. So I feel like it can fit more people trying it out. So it should yeah, yeah. overall be a pretty good success marketing and just enjoyment wise too for people. Yeah. Oh, should we get into I, the tinfoil hat marketing theories? Mm, yeah. Because Tasty was building oh, yeah. my hype up oh, absolutely. for you yeah. podcast. I, I think it's interesting. The yeah. hats, <laughs> so, like, uh, you, you've seen Jagex's Twitter, right? Have you seen all the weird shit they're doing on Twitter? I, like, I was telling people that yeah, they yeah. hired yeah. someone who knows how to promo now. I, I yeah, always wanted crypto. them to do that, but they're doing memes. They're doing I know, who, does, I know who does, does their promo now. Is it Goblin again? I was kidding. Is it a newer person, or is it... OG person that just learned I, how to. It's it's a newer person. I don't know if I, I can it. like. I, I don't know if they it. like care if I say. Yeah, it's not a spoiler. <laughs> you know? No, it, it's uh, Goblin. Yeah, he's he's the one. I knew, yo, I knew, real? bro. Yeah, it's yeah. Goblin, dude. Oh, I told you the savior of Rune. So there's the two gods. It's not just the social media people. There's a few yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Few more. Yo, there's two gods of the J mods. There's God Ash and then God, God you know, Goblin. He's really cool. I like him a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. But okay, my like my super tinfoil hat theory <clears throat> is: Do you guys remember that like accidental leak they did, like the Facebook ad that they? Posted oh yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I swear <laughs> to God, that's on purpose. Like, no, same. Like, I agree. I agree with you. Like they Wait, had to have done this? that on purpose. Well, yeah, you did you see that Facebook ad that they posted way too early that like showed <laughs> all of the mechanics of the raid? Guys, he it. Really? Yeah, no, yeah, I, I yeah, can't remember yeah, that. Yeah. It's like it's like a 15 um, second video that got shared through Discord. It was supposed to come out on the day of release. 
Uh, oh, yeah, but shit. they posted it like a week and a half early. Yo, I, I, so, Odd Goblin, so he wasn't Method, so he understands kind of the gamer perspective. He probably understands yeah. clickbait on Twitter because he was doing memes, he was doing yeah, puzzles, he's, he's he was doing very riddles. smart. Like, he knows what he's doing, for sure. I've always wanted RuneScape to hire someone for their social media. I was always like, yeah. dude, they got to spice this up. They're not getting likes at all. They're the most OG game of all time. You see a Rune 4, you like, it up. like, it's, you got it, right? And they're finally utilizing that, and uh, it's perfect. It's perfect, dude. Yeah. No, I, I, I think second, they've been doing it. a lot of, like, guerrilla marketing, honestly. Like, they've really, but the, the J mods have always been passionate. Most of them are younger. Uh, I think a lot of the reason they didn't for a long time was probably just the suits, if I had to guess. I'd they imagine, probably, right? Yeah, the corporate. Yeah, yeah. It's like one of the most freedom. traded companies. And apparently yeah. it's traded to the part where it's like, oh, you want this as well? Like, they just kind of, like, add it into the trade. Yeah, we can yeah. offer this as well. It's not a good look for running a company when you're just kind of like that side meal of the plate, yeah. the beans or the peas or something. So, I could see I mean, why. I, I really hope that um, there's, like, an incentive for Goblin to do this. Because, you know, he's a relatively new mold coming in. He's definitely getting involved in doing some fantastic stuff. But, like, if he has, like, really no outside incentive to do the social media stuff, and I feel like this is kind of why... Because um. they, they, they've they touched it in the past, and they've dipped their toe in it, and then they just seem to go through, like, a period where there's nothing for ages. I, I feel like there can't be, like, an incentive. Like, imagine if Jagex were to be like, okay... We're gonna, you know, we're gonna offer a position where it's gonna be like extra responsibilities on top of your title, and it means you gotta do a few posts on our Instagram and social medias like once a week or something like that. And it was yeah. just like a little bit of extra pay or, or, you know, some kind of incentive to do it. Because if he's completely doing it off his own back, it's like, how realistic is it that it's gonna like continue on? That that's something yeah. that I I genuinely am a little concerned about because it's like you said, man. Like there's so many memes and awesome stuff in the community that can like bolster the game and they can post it and get like a hundred thousand likes of a silly meme of something. But it's like they're not utilizing that as well as they could be. And I wonder if yeah. it's because there's not an incentive for anybody to do it. You know? Isn't it that's that's crazy a very genuine concern. It, yeah. I was just gonna say it's a genuine concern because you know, historically <laughs> the J mods are not like particularly well compensated or treated from <laughs> from yeah. what we know. Nope. I mean, usually if the you're very industry. on social media, like yeah, you're true. at some point, you're probably gonna hit a bunch of backlash. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Like, mm. You're, you're gonna get we... roasted at some point by Reddit or something like that, mm. and it's like, well, then you're like de-incentivized to continue doing it. You know what I mean? It's like why put your neck on the line when you can just work on the content behind the scenes, especially if you're not benefiting. From what do you doing think? It? What do you think of their marketing though overall? Right? Because it feels different this time, right? Yeah, I think it's no, been it, great. It's good. They yeah. did a very good job. Yeah, They're utilizing same. memes, dude. RuneScape only is alive to this day because of memes, anyways. They're finally understanding that these RuneScape and memes, all right, that's the best yeah. way. We literally live on it. <laughs> yeah, yes. something I'm super happy about is that, like how engaged they are with creators now. Like, look at how many people, like not even just myself, have made projects for Raid Three at Jagex. Like several creators, and uh, yeah. like. Who's they, the, yeah, they, is, they is Goblin behind that too? People. Is Goblin the driving force yeah. for that, um, you think? He was my liaison. He was the one who like uh, reached out and asked me to do it. And I don't know exactly how it's structured behind the scenes. But, oh, we should totally like, I, I know they, <laughs> they're making a definite effort to uh, connect with like the community and the creators a little bit more. Yeah, I've noticed this year, um, probably hasn't even been a full year yet. I've noticed yeah. the, their marketing has changed so much but for, but for the better of course for the better yeah no they've, they've definitely been stepping it up it's eye-catching yeah, you know you're oh, like yeah, what sure. are they doing over here when they just spam some utter nonsense you're trying to figure it out you're like they got you thinking about stuff whereas beforehand they would just show you okay update two days here's a picture of it and people are like okay that's cool that's the same thing yeah. runescape 3 is doing and their social media presence is near existent for the game they have yeah so i, I just really hope they continue to do it I, I, I do. So. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I here, here's the thing. I didn't know that Mod Goblin was an ex Method employee who dealt with sponsorships, and you know, I imagine the stuff that Method does behind the scenes. So he probably was paid previously for a job that he may be kind of like doing now at this point in time for Jagex, maybe unpaid and just being like, "Hey, this is what I can do on top of my my usual JMod duties." 
Who knows? Yeah. Like, th this is all questions for him. But, Mod GG. You know, it'd be awesome if it continued because it's nice when you see them posting stuff instead of like radio silence for ages. You know, yeah. it, it kind of gives you the idea and feeling that like, you know, they're working behind the scenes and stuff. Like, I haven't stopped thinking about the PvP weapons that they're talking about bringing out for the um, the new it's reworked it. early bosses. Like, the bow in particular and how it reminds me of like Ash's. Uh, activated Q in League of Legends. I don't know. By the way, Tasty, do you play, play any other games? Do you play any other games, or is it just RuneScape? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I tend to play one main game at a time, which obviously is RuneScape for me now, but I uh, play a lot of CSGO. Um, I'm a big RPG guy. Like, I love Bethesda games, stuff like that. I've been playing Oblivion recently mm, for some nice. reason, but good fucking Jeez, game. Really for the new Skyrim, bro. In like <laughs> Skyrim 2, bro. Hell Skyrim yeah. 2. No, baby. it's like Skyrim 7, dude. Like it's like on its 7th yeah, it's, release. I I'm, I'm actually when it comes out for Elder Scrolls 6. I don't I don't, I don't want to think about it. I, I, I dude, it's, it's gonna take like five uh, years, right? Yeah. Like another five years or something. They Double teased it like four four years ago. I think. It's gonna take like five more years. <laughs> it's just gonna be the new Elden Ring. But no, um, I mean, I don't we were speaking that. about the meta for raids, and I always see that a lot of the PVM content that comes out from like an outsider's perspective is items you get are usually the best items for the content. Yeah. And uh, I don't know a ton about the items coming from raids. Have they all been revealed? Yes. Are they all? Yep. Should we should we cover them and see what what metas could be somewhat used with these like the one handed or the two handed staff and all that other stuff? Oh yeah, I got yeah. some cool info on that. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Yeah. yeah leak it. Hey, you go first, man. Hey, you go first. <clears throat> Guess goes first. Well, I was gonna say the the only like really important things I think are Masori, which um is the new range armor, it's the new Bass and Slaw range armor. Um, they did the whole like redesign thing, and that was the other tinfoil hat theory is that uh, <laughs> um, yes. Masori was bad on purpose on release, so it would generate a lot of hype. Which now that like I'm thinking about it, is it's, you know, yeah. it's very possible. It's pretty possible. That looks way. No, better I agree. Than I agree. They, pu they, pumped, they pumped out the there. second set really quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, it was like it had was, that ready was, to go like two days, dude. It, yeah, it was almost <laughs> like overnight. That's what Bro. we were saying. Like. I, I, I kind of feel like here's the, like the basic logic behind it, right? If you bring out a new best in slot, a tear up from the previous best in slot, it can look worse. Like that yeah. just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense in an MMO. Yeah. That's just not how it works, right? And, and like, I, I, constructively and not as a dickhead. Like I think the original design was underwhelming. I didn't. Dude, think those look like rags. rags. You know, it looked like yeah, a. It, a rag. Said it looked like. <laughs> Like a it medium like blue outfit. Yeah. And I was like, it, yeah, it kind of does. Bro, it was literally yeah. like the reworked slave outfit from that bloody quest in the desert. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, like yeah the slave robes. Yeah, but like, you know, so. you're. I mean, they explain the, the original set, though, just in case someone missed out on it when they came up with this. Uh, Let's see if I can find it. Very way. It got absolutely roasted. It was just like bright yellow with the twisted bow that didn't even look anywhere aesthetically pleasing. And then this apparently they, and they pumped it out the next night a new set. So they think. Yeah, look here it is. Here it was. Uh, yeah, go to the comments. Like, see how friendly those are. On the bank. Yeah, <laughs> I just didn't like the helmet, especially like, the helmet, especially the helmet. Like was awful. this, yeah. some people just give back. Like you know, saying that you don't like some <laughs> things, it's fine. But like, that's what we wanted. This is what we wanted. And then we got. Some. Oh yeah, the, the RuneScape community generally generally goes too far when they don't like something. <laughs> that's that's a yeah. common theme. Yeah, it yep. sucks. They're really softy, dude. Yeah, but no. Okay, but on the uh, on mm. the topic of, mm. or you go ahead first. I had a whole other tangent. I was just gonna say to their credit, I think they did. Like they they've came back with it. I think it looks really good. I think most people are happy with it now. I've not heard mm. as many complaints for the new one. So yeah, oh, I mean the I new one looks it, dope. Like it does. Oh, wouldn't it, it be interesting so if that is like a genuine tactic to get people engaged? Oh, here's the upgrade. Like, maybe, for, yeah. Maybe, People that weren't looking at raids free that much, and then they saw the rewards and were like, "Wait, hold up, that looks rubbish. Let me be outraged for a minute." And then yeah. they come back the next day, and it's like, "Oh shit, that looks good." And it's like that instant, like I don't know if that's like some big brain like reverse it psychology. Yeah, it's it's small goblin. It, 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 it I, I, I genuinely goblin. think it could be. I really small goblin. Be. I've been diving into a lot of uh, communities <laughs> when I'm I'm looking at my NFTs, and I want to bring that up too bad, right? But what they'll do is they'll release this like basic art right away, and it'll get so much shit. But it will make its way through the blockchain or the community, and they'll be like, "All right, 
now we're going to rework this art if you give some of these coins and it builds hype for the project and it almost feels like they took that playbook yeah it's playbook like the playbook. sonic movie bro you know the first sonic <laughs> trailer like oh my yeah. god that was so it's disturbing it was disturbing holy Man. and then they, I, they I, good point yeah, yeah. Oh, damn it. i wish this worked for like videos where you could upload the first <laughs> one just completely unedited <laughs> And then every, everybody watches it and they're like, this sucks, man. I wish you edited this. And then you're like, oh, here you go. Ooh. And then nobody watches Woo! it. <laughs> nobody watches right. it. You just get yeah. more downvotes. Uh, yeah, that's something that people, people aren't very forgiving, are they? Like, no. I don't Yo, know, like, this is different. Not, yeah. not the... online, at least. I feel like people kind of hold on to stuff. But, you know. Yeah. So what's the bit, range yeah. armor set do? I, I was originally oh. like a low HP, higher hit, but they got rid of that, I believe. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, because that was stupid, and I'm glad they did. Um, well, I was excited for that, but I was like, it I don't want to pay this much money. Yeah. It was just too niche. Basically. You know, I want like yeah. a borderline set of this. Gear. It was a practicality like... issue. Yeah. Like the only yeah. places where that would just be like so nice and significant Slayer. to have, like <laughs> I just can't camp that low. Like it's <laughs> not going to work. Um, yeah. But that was, okay, that was another point I wanted to bring up is about the raids through rewards in general. I feel like for every release of content that I have been here for, like Gauntlet, Nightmare, Nex, um, I think those are like yeah. the main big ones that I've been here for. <clears throat> um, even like Hydra with the Ferocious Gloves and stuff. People were excited to do that content so they could get the new gear and bring it to Tob, bring it to the Inferno, Everywhere. bring it to Cox. Like no one was excited to do the content for the content itself. They were just like, oh, let's finish these rewards. Let's go camp next for 2,000 hours so I can never do next again. <laughs> and like so do the fun old. content with the next armor, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just really hope that this is the first piece of content in a while where people are like, you know, oh boy, like I can use this new armor to go back into the raid and like use more invocations and make it more difficult. So <laughs> that's just like the mindset. That's the mentality that I'm hoping people like bring into this with the new rewards. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feels like they might, bro. I, I was just thinking, like, low HP range armor. That'd be so good for not only PK, but I'd imagine the speedrunning community would have just some crazy, disgusting strats that are so risky that if you just mess up a little bit, you'll ruin your whole run. Uh, what what did they end up going for with this armor set, by the way, as a, as a noob who, who wasn't paying attention to the updates? I don't think there's a set bonus. I think it's just more more damage. Well, damage. yeah, the unique the unique stuff about this armor is that it gives damage. Yeah, like, it if gives, like, actually, a range like, strength, which no yeah. other range armor does besides oh. Van Braces, mm -hmm. the new Van Braces. That's going to be disgusting. Does it yeah. make the Darkbow Max hit go up? Probably yeah, not. probably by two. Probably by, like, two or something. No. You, yeah, you I, dude, this thing... Hit? This whole set is eight strength, uh, extra, eight extra strength or something. Yeah, it's a lot. That's eight like more than mat, anything you know? we've had. Yeah. Like with the T bow, yeah, I... that's like five, six max hits or some shit. Yeah, yeah, six crazy. max hits or something. Yeah, like yeah, it's crazy. My, like, my Inferno speedrunning is going to go crazy. Dude. Oh, yeah. That's like <laughs> literally <laughs> minutes, like literally minutes get shaved. Yeah. Oh, my, my, my favorite thing to do with new items is guess the price. Like the. So what is it going to be for the first time they sell it? And maybe like a max. Oh, cash. this is max, dude. This is max. Cash. You think max yeah. for each piece or what? Mm, okay, maybe not the helm, but like the body, like and the legs. I think yeah. top and bottom would be like two bill each. Probably. Yeah, exactly. Bill I think this helmet, though, bill. I think this helmet's going to be like a bill. Yeah, exactly. Only because we, uh, usually, you know, you want melee helmets for a lot of hybrid tribrid stuff. So and Slayer helm, you know. Like yeah, that. how much do you think the staff is gonna go for? Dude, for staff in the game? Like, I'm, I'm, oh, so yeah, scythe. I'll, um, I'll, I'll just use I'll use scythe for reference. Um, it was like four, three, four bill for a while actually. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. So, so this staff our, probably gonna be four bill. Yo, Rice, could you pop the picture of the staff real quick? They gotta see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take sure it really quick. Over and back. All right. Leak around it. Dude, in that raid uh, Discord that we have set up. There's uh I invited a guy recently crescendo to it because he wants to join us on day one, and he's a part of a Discord where apparently there are bids for the first items on release. Mm. And um, already, apparently, yeah, yeah, people are like bidding for it. I've actually got it here. So now I don't, I don't know, like if this is gonna be accurate or not. But so far, apparently the bids are the helmet for one point eight bill, the chest plate for two point nine bill, the legs for two point. That'd be like bill. literally the first hour or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, the war. This is like first in game. Uh, yeah. Ward of Eladins, two point Eladin. five. Uh, Karis five hundred mil. Shadow of Tumakan. 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 Yeah. Eight bill. <laughs> Eight bill. First. Uh, yeah. First one ever. Yeah. I. 
I mean, they're Dude, rich, the man. Funny, they're probably the ex Lakers, you know? Yeah. The right, solo mission isn't going to be able to, sadly, make day of release content because this man is NDAs. He's not able to do it. No, he's in the He's in the chat as well. 8.8 bill for the staff, by the way. And uh, I know what his his basic go to is. He wants to get the staff and test it out for uh, content. Yeah. And uh, you saw the price, and I was like, "Good luck, dude." <laughs> yeah, hey, that Bill, that's going to be the most expensive ever. I would have purchase. to drop trade quite a lot of stuff. <laughs> nah, it'd be it'd be interesting it. though because there was a bit of idea, pushback man. because of like uh, you know he said, "Well, you know that can't be the case because um, you know." It's like this is going to be easier than doing TOB, for example, because there's the easy mode. What I would say is I think prices are probably going to be at all time high. And a reason for that is we've had five years of like grinding chambers or even longer for chambers, TOB. It's like there's been a lot of money that's been amassed in that time where people like they got Nex as well, man. Nex is disgusting money. It's just gross how much you make there. Like I think a lot of people are like secret savers at this point. Like they've got a fair bit of GP. Oh, I can I can literally buy that game. with that price. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Yeah, I mean, like, like I could literally, <laughs> I could literally buy maybe a couple of them. I don't no, not a couple. No, 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 just one. Yeah, I'll buy one for each of you. All right, maybe. I'll... No, just one. <laughs> you buying me a shadow of two? Dude, someone's trying to buy it for a bill first one in the game. A yeah. bill? Yeah, I believe it. And yeah, why you yeah. said because you're on the podcast, we each get one from his bank. What? No, <laughs> no, I said I could oh, theoretically oh, buy one. I day theoretically day. could buy one. That's all. Who's your Who's your day one team? How many people are you going with? Probably maxed uh, out, right? Oh, I, I think we should go with four. four. Mm. It's, yeah. I mean, it's eight people tops, yeah. and we got yeah. ten people in there. Now, chances are somebody's gonna be late. Could be me, uh, <laughs> or like you know, somebody's gonna be a no show. And uh, there's also been people that have came in towards the like eight and sorry nine and tenth place where I'm like, we got a team, but if somebody doesn't show up, like you can scoot in basically. Um, but yeah, there's there's basically like nine, maybe ten of us that we have right now, and they're mostly um, well, me and Rice Cup are in there. Solo Mission was in there, but he is no longer, uh, and just basically a bunch of like. Fucking game. I mean, it's just day game. one, anyway. So if he wants yeah. to in the future, we can all meet up at some point in the future. You know, that's that's yeah, yeah, what exactly. happens for top. I had I literally I I, had, I read it with like fifty different people in a in like a week. You know, when I did top, so they were all some oh, of the yeah. sweatiest people. Though I was like I'm intimidated. Streaming ten hours a day. Just any <laughs> yeah. team I can get into, bro. We're gonna be, we're gonna be doing TOA. It's gonna be good yeah fun. for sure for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I mean, I remember getting um. Rapier, one of the first ones in game for TOB on release. I what think we got it for? in free KC. Uh, I think it sold for one point four bill. Fuck. Yeah, we sold, we, we sold. We sold just this year. Yeah, my team. My team sold like the helmet for like a bill. It was like one of the first. So yeah. <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. God. Yeah, it was one bill. I know. I, mean, I don't so really bad. understand. Outside of being a content creator. Like oh, Spark Mac or something. I don't really understand why people buy it on day one. Like they Some people have know. a lot of money. Yeah, meaning they just want to flex. Yeah, it has to be right. They can't it's think that it's gonna go it's up story. in price. Although there have been items that have been sold for less on release than what they actually balanced out, which is interesting because it used to always be a case of like it sells for mega and then it crashes. Well, it would. It out. Yeah, that would never be for items in the hundreds of mills though. You know, things that are already like hundred one bill, they always go down. Like you know, yeah, yeah. Forza has totally remained like... shockingly steady, though. So. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because actually, Nexus is a decent gatekeep, <laughs> honestly. For like high level yeah. uh, gear wise, it's like yeah. If you want to join a split team, you need like max gear, basically. So not not easy to get into those. Yeah, dude. If you want to like efficiently do max, you basically need to have like two bill, about two bill in gear. Like, flat out, I've been doing it a ton recently. Uh, you need Zarek Crossbow, you need Max Range Bonus, you need Tebow. Like, you're you're looking at 2 bill, you know? Or yeah. maybe slightly under 2 bill. And if you don't have everything... You go scuff like, teams, bro. People are just like, nah, man, you go join a non-max team. Thank you, buddy. And like, you don't you, split. That's that's the that's the here. killer. Yeah, you don't you can't split with those other teams, so it's a killer. But yeah, that keeps the Torver prices nice. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, these warbler pieces are so expensive, man. I've been killing it now for like weeks, and it's it still blows my mind 
and we get drops there. And it's like, you forget how much it is until it's traded to you, and you're like, Yo, <laughs> Yo. Hell, yeah. yeah. I made bills going dry for those stupid legs, but it was nice. It was good bond money. Yep. Yeah, so. but speaking of these these prices here, what do you think items are going to do on the release? Not the items coming out, but the items that are already going up, like ECB, or sorry, Arma Plate legs. I mean, potion-wise, I, I, it kind of right. sucks as a PK or I'm out here trying to buy super combat since Terra Breeze. I'm like, what the hell's going on with these prices, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah everyone's yeah. stocking up. Everyone's Parade. stockpiling, bro. I, yeah, it's the same for me, but um, I think most of these items will remain pretty good price because, I mean, Bandos, you're probably going to have to use that there. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. Armadillo, yeah, of course, you, you're going to use it but, there. Okay, Ancestral, let me limit it then. What do you think is going to spike or possibly dump on release? <sighs> at the moment the niche weapons i think will some of them will ultimately die you know after uh, walls and stuff, what, like I you mean assume. like the zerite crossbow or what kind of niche yeah weapon? yeah exactly those kind of like it really depends right kind of thing so yeah things like zerite crossbow if it ends up not being good there it'll probably get it'll probably crash i don't i don't think that it's gonna be good there but i think that so. the crossbow will probably maintain or like dragon value. claws for example right based, based off of nex alone because nex yeah. isn't going anywhere and if torb is useful there People need to kill Nex. People yeah, but I know, but the bow. Nex, you know? Yeah, but the bow will only have to use at Nex and not at Rage Three. No. Yeah, no, no. If, but if that's the, it doesn't work. But that's the thing. It kind of already yeah. is like that. Like you wouldn't really choose the bow over much outside of uh, the crossbow. But, well, but like theoretically, right? Yeah. If it's good at Rage Three, you know the price is gonna like fifty percent oh, increase. Yeah. You know, you guys are saying. You, I, I no. think that like people sometimes like don't get get on to play. And some people don't really think about this stuff. So, like, on day of release, it'd be like, oh, shit, I need to get Armadillo so I can go do raids. And it's like, oh, bloody hell, the chest plate's 60 mil. It was it's like 60 now? Yesterday. Yeah, it's like it's extremely it's, expensive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling people, like, when Blessed DIs came out for peers, I'm like, oh, that's, like, the easiest merch, right? It can't come true. Fucking, like, triples in price, dude. Now we're looking at ACBs and, and chest plate. I keep seeing ACBs. ACPs. Armadillo chest. ACPs. Armadillo chest plate. Yeah. ACS, but, yeah. ACPs. Acronym. Yeah. I'm thinking, dude, it can't be that simple. You just buy this, it goes up. Apparently, yes, it can be that incredibly simple. Just easy merches right now. Uh, but it's probably late, too stop. late now. It's too late now. You know. You think they'll go up on release late. still, or are they gonna um, like? Nah, I think you'll. Like, I gotta imagine they're out here. Nah, I think you'll stay because uh, armor though you needed to make the armor, the new armor. Like it, it depends if you're trying to make easy, fast money. If you're trying to make fast money. Then you're gonna invest in something that's super speculative, which will either make you fast money or, or it will make money. you lose fast money. Like, so, like sorry, if, really, if you want like a long-term item that I'm kind of thinking could do well in the long run, um, and I think that the the progress on this item is gonna be super slow. Uh, I think the movement's gonna be minimal, but it will eventually uptick. Um, and I don't even know if it'd be worth investing in, but the soul ring, because the soul ring is gonna be an item that's used inside this staff. Obviously, the staffs are going to come into the game super slowly. So it's like it maybe the soul run check the price in like a year's time and see how much it is because it's under 200 GP right now. It's yeah, Bodhi's got hard. 10 million soul runes, so he's made oh, his man. money. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah <laughs> ginger because he's ginger, you know, the ginger meme right? <laughs> from way back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. but, you know, I, I think I get a lot of people in my Twitch chat <laughs> asking me, like, what should I buy? And, and I'm just like, just buy what you're gonna use, man. Don't worry about the price like yeah. you know if, if yeah. it seems silly right now the price of it like don't buy it. maybe buy something which is like i basically say if you're asking me if i should buy it then you shouldn't buy it just based on the fact that you've been, even had to think about it because you're worried about losing that money yeah it's like just I, go for dehyde or something like go for yeah cameras. i just tell that. people i just tell people buy the things that you're going to use now because you know at least you're using it and you're benefiting from it right and then, yeah. hey, if it ends up being good at the new place, good shit, 50-50. You, you won the 50-50, you know? Like, right. It all depends on the item. Yeah. Like I had some guy the other day say, uh, I'm thinking of buying a Tebow. I don't know if I should do it now with Raid 3 coming out or if I should wait until after. And I'm just like, dude, listen, like Tebow-wise, it has consistently stayed pretty much around a bill since release. And that was a long time ago. So I don't think that number is going anywhere anytime soon. And the thing with the Tebow is, it's is so like, even if it's good at Raid 3, or it's bad at raids free, it still has loads of other uses, right? It's like it has everything that it currently has now. So if you want to snag it, do it because you're gonna make money from doing everything else that you do. You know? So I 
don't worry too much about the prices. I, I know it's um a place of privilege I say that from because I have all the items I need. But like I, I wouldn't concern yourself too much with them. And if you are worried about it, just hang on to your cash for a little bit and, and maybe buy something that's like a like the best the difference between the best in slots and like the one down from that aren't usually justifiable with the price, right? Especially if you don't have a lot of money. Like my my point is like God Dehyde versus Armadil. It's definitely not as good, but like Armadil is 50 times more expensive, right? That's a massive leap for a few extra stats. And this Missouri is going to be like a, a few times more expensive than Armadil, like 20 times. I love talking about the price, but uh, to Rice and Tasty, the PVMers here, what do you think, ah, right, since see. we know the items, right? And oh, well, Tom, of course, he's way better <laughs> at, at PVM than me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll see you know um, <laughs> where, do you, <laughs> where do you think these items are going to go use you where are they going to be useful at what what metas are they going to replace that already exist well missouri probably everywhere you use armadil i think that yeah. one's fairly easy yeah. i think the most interesting one is going to be the staff yes because the mm. staff mm -hmm. has pot like potentially mm. can be the best at so many like it can dethrone the t-bone a few places it can just dethrone this like it can oh, be so mm -hmm. good in so many places, but the downside is you have to wear like full ancestral, full mage gear. So if you're taking any sort of unavoidable damage, like it's going to be a massive trade off. Like theoretically, it's supposed to be best in slot at Armadil, uh, but you're going to get like shredded if you have Armadil or if you have ancestral at Armadil. So like, is it going to be worth it? It's going to be interesting to see. Oh, I'll tell you why it's going to be so stupidly worth it, dude. Because this weapon, <laughs> it, it's a slow weapon, right? So tick, yeah. yeah, right. So that means there's four takes where nothing happens, right? So and and guess what? This this weapon is actually stronger than chinning armadillo, like straight up. Yeah. So you're gonna no, kill this. Oh, so so oh, literally, good. let's just say um you know and on paper you literally kill the boss in like twenty seconds, twenty twenty five seconds, uh, uh, like something like that, right? Crazy fast. And the thing is, you could literally just swap to bandos. While you're just chilling, it's up to full, full yeah. Just do like a, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, not actually, that's, that's I'm, not, I'm not kidding you. I'm not. I'm not kidding you. That's literally what you would do because. I, I, but but obviously you switch. you have to be Easy. kind of you got you got to be proficient with your clicks or whatever. But it's a simple thing that all you have to do is literally put on like just this shear for like four takes, and then you just put on your mage gear for that one take. You hit the boss, and it will real it will literally die in like 20, 30 seconds, and and. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I've actually been putting off my like armadillo so. pet hunt because i am basically a pet hunter that's mostly what i do yeah. uh, until this staff comes out because i just hate armadillo so yeah. much dude. so so yes at god wars actually it's going to be incredibly good because is it, wait is it good at any other of the god wars oh classes? yeah all of them Zami, i think oh you can all, all four <laughs> all four of them yeah it's oh, better than a cool, tivo yeah, at like dude. all four of them it's disgusting rice cup do you know if um yeah. you'll be able to so so the whole armor set Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me mm -hmm. start again. The staff, basically, the way it works is the mm. accuracy is like through the roof, right? That's why all of the ancestral and best in slot mage pieces have gone so high. Yes. Sears ring. Oh, three it's times. Three. It's How three times the work? the base accuracy with the staff. Do you think so Sears ring will go up then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A bit. A bit. Um, yeah, I don't if, know what the price is. I, I like, think, I think if like you. Yeah, like, I think if you were like, you know, pretty much flat out max mage, you're looking at like 100 plus easily. 120, 130. Yo, I, so triple mid, that mid it's out. 400 it's Bro, like 400 we're, magic we're three yeah. days away from the release yeah. of this shit and people have known about this for like three four five six months they make people got those cheap yeah and, and also your like, magic percent is going to go up to like 80 percent or something like that so with the staff so my crazy. original question <laughs> will you be able to kill tecton with like pure mage no <laughs> no i don't think so no because that's that's like the first thing I think of. Because that boss sucks, man. Even I don't even think you can damage the uh, Tecton Imagine with magic. Imagine buying that eight so. bill staff oh. for Tecton. Yeah, dude. you I'm have like PV, you, yeah. The like, Tecton is weird because because you can only you, know, you can only do melee damage to it. That's it. So it wouldn't work there. But the staff will destroy for speed of portal though, and like vanguards. It will shit on those guys. And honestly, Ooh. it will probably okay. shit on Mudadow. Honestly, even yeah, it probably like destroy Mudadow. Yeah, I so know what, for a fact that Foss, uh, uh, Fitzpila portal, a hundred percent like destroy Vanguard. What, what, destroy, what's like, destroy. what's like the only remaining factor that means that it won't shit on something? Um, honestly, 
I don't know. It's, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I might just shit on everything. Like, if it's thinking. immune to magic, maybe? Yeah, like, uh, definitely, if it's immune to magic, yeah. Like so it, this is basically mm. like the Tebow when it was first released. Yeah. It was basically, released. the Tebow is going to lose some jobs, you know? Basically, yeah, it's going to lose some jobs. Uh -huh. Which isn't I can't wait to take this bad boy to Scorpio, dude. Yeah, sure. it, will, it will definitely <laughs> lose some of its uh, uses. Uh, like quite yeah. a bit i'm not gonna lie to you but of course okay. good luck getting the staff right because it's probably gonna be dumb expensive for a long time i'll get it day one uh it. yeah i mean sure i'll let you borrow it right <laughs> oh hell yeah thanks man yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I got one of my rich friends to give me that for a video or something dude I yeah uh hey yeah i'm sure you probably got some connections for it yeah it's it's actually higher potential dps than a, than a tebow so Bro, do you know what? That's Rice not, Cup has nuts, gone man. dry on like every single big ticket item. Yo, let me let me get a drop, bro. Please. Bro, I, I actually <laughs> really want him to get the staff. I want to be, nice, be in his team, oh, and I want him to like donate me a thousand dollars like off stream. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll split. I'll split you guys well. I do genuinely want you to get something. I'll, 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 I'll split time. though. I got I got money bro, to split, so don't. Tasty, worry. you don't even understand the work ethic on this little spreadsheet motherfucker down here, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> when the nightmare first came out and you had to kill it with like two thousand health or whatever it was with its fucking massive shields, this dude's like, oh, I'll probably do a little bit. You know, I won't complete the set. <laughs> Like, literally, like, a million hours later, this man's, like, got everything. Yo, bro, it was, <laughs> like, okay, so I'll tell you, it was, like, each kill took, like, 22 minutes. That's bad. And then oh, you spent, wow. like, two minutes to, you would have to spend two minutes to run there. So it was, like, two kills an hour for a hot That's minute. That's horrible. Yeah, so I just spent a month of doing that, and then I finally got my first drop. Yeah. Yeah. Man, okay, I did, anyways, like, I think story. I've done, I think I've done, like, between three or four hundred heart, uh, for Sonny's Nightmares. And I'm just like, I never want to go back there. Yeah. I like Fasani. Like, I'm kind Fasani, of. Fasani, dude, I wish I could do Fasani, man. It, that shit didn't exist, so. So, yeah, the actual, I know you did. <laughs> the actual uh, Fasani's Nightmare, like the mechanics and everything, they're awesome, right? I think they did a fantastic job with that, where you are severely punished for mistakes and you're rewarded for not making any. I love that concept. Yeah. The thing that I don't like is that my attachment to killing something is usually based upon the gold that I can make from it. And the items just quite frankly aren't worth it for how rare they are. Like when you're looking at yeah, like under 100 anymore. mil, it's, it's, it's not really that worth it. When the harmonize was like 2 bill, like that shit was worth. But like those items all trash. Sad. Oh, and as, um, a, as PVM content creators, like I know you guys are looking forward to Rage 3 as new content, but it seems like these items are almost, y'all have careers, but like career makers. Like if you get the first staff, people are going to be watching oh, that video. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's on the top of your mind all the time, right? I'd imagine. Dude, I have this terrible feeling that the first staff is just going to be some luck box in entry mode with his three buddies who just right fucking here. somehow spike <laughs> that. <yeah. laughs> Honestly, I mean... Can we get that staff? Nah. Like, I mean, statistically, statistically, that's a pretty decent chance because yeah, most people that do is. race three are not creators, so they're probably going to have a chance. Yeah, it's a scarily high yeah. chance. And I think that's always been the case. Honestly. Yeah. You can, I don't yeah. know if you guys know this explicitly, but you can get the staff. You can get the shadow with zero invocations. Like, it's theoretically possible. Bro, really? really? Even though, like, right, the video kind of showed, showed it. That's good. It's, 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 yeah. Even if it's, it's going to be, be like, later. a 1 out of 15,000, 1 out of, like, 20,000, like, that's going to happen day release. Oh, it happens. Like, someone's, someone's okay. going to get Think a shadow. Think about people that get, like, uh, yeah. a feed okay. from a man on Dead Mambo mm -hmm. release on their mm -hmm. first pickpocket. Yeah. Like, so well, there is yeah. going to be a bunch of them in the game first day. I've like, seen I've seen plenty of 1,000 point Tebos. Like, it, it happens, yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, it happens. I hope it's us. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, it's going to be some random dude that just started playing, like, two months, two weeks ago. 100%. 100%. You reckon? Yeah, probably. <laughs> he's gonna um, put it on the GE for 500 mil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's gonna buy it for me. Oh, yeah. God. he's gonna lose out. Yo, I'm sure um, it's gonna happen a lot. Do we want to talk more about the other items? Because I actually, I would, um, learned about some more here. stuff. So, I'm trying. I learned. I learned a bunch of new stuff. Us, uh, particularly for the dagger, because I thought it was gonna be completely like ah, it's not actually that good. You know, the new the new dagger. Oh, the stabby thing. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was gonna be pretty garbage. What's the deal with that? Um, yo, it's gonna be. It should be really good at next. It should. It should be good at next. It's gonna yeah. be really good at next because of a few reasons. It's five ticks, so you can you can slow down her attacks. 
and and also you know nexus tanky so it bypass it's really good at bypassing the fence and have uh and have a very consistent uh, minimal hit so it should be better than rapier and it'll you know it'll, it'll just make the melee aspect of next even better so you're gonna really want to feel pushed to, to melee for sure and also another thing is that it's also really good at verzik p2 not not like really? better than a scythe but you uh, know how pre 2 verzik is very tanky right and yeah. even though it's a stat weapon but because the way it works and all that it actually matches um it's actually really good on p2 verzik if you don't have a scythe do you use it on on slash and tecton with it I don't. Does it have a slash style? Because I imagine you I probably know. just. I've never yeah. used it. If it has a slash style, I imagine you use the slash style. It's yeah. It's yeah. it's really good at Tecton too, actually. Um, if you to don't have a slash. For corp as well, I've heard, right? So. No. So well, so. It depends so, on what you're doing. Yeah. So so it's yes and no, right? Um, if you do the the method where you spec it down to complete zero, it's useless, right? Yeah. But but the but for solo corping on an Iron Man, it, um, it's actually, it's actually not the meta to do that. You know, because like the suicide method is still better if you do it properly. You, you can still get eight kills an hour. I've, I've I've done it plenty of times, and like you can actually get eight kills an hour pretty consistently. And with this stab weapon, actually, it should be even better than that method, because you you only need to land three warhammers, and the weapon is already going to be like almost hundred percent accurate on on the corp. So so like normally it would you would um, you do like three four warhammers like five, uh 20 art lights and then like you know 10 bgs's right which takes so much time minutes and minutes but yeah with this dagger you only have to warhammer three times which will probably take like under a minute and you're and you can fight the boss so it's that quick so here's the real question yeah and i'm probably gonna is it get... one-handed too i heard i heard it's yeah, one -handed. One -handed. Yeah, yeah so yeah. literally you you could also you know bring like an le to flick with it too at court because like, you're, you're not lowering its stats to zero right so it's gonna hit you it doesn't matter because then you can swap Ellie's and stuff. So it should, I think me and my friend was talking about it. It was like, it should be like eight to nine kills an hour. So it should be a, one more, up to one more kill an hour with the dagger. Bro, so the real question here yeah. is this weapon going to be the rapier killer? Is the rapier even going to have a place mm -hmm. in the game after this? Uh, I mean, it'll be like a slayer yeah. item. Slayer yeah, like, where, you, in, like, where do you use the rapier right shit? now? I don't even know. Right. Literally training. I think it's a mid. No. It's, uh, like, it's like a hundred mil plus. It's yeah. mad. Like, yes, it's, it's the bi. Yeah. It's like bis strain training still. I guess. Bis yeah. strain training. I, I'm just. I think the rapier might take a plummet. Maybe I don't know. It depends on the price of this. Like when it levels out. But if this thing's gonna be better than that in every single way, and it's stabbed, it shouldn't be better. Kind of like, like, um, I think the rapier is still gonna be better at rates, because fossil crystals and stuff. Yeah. If well, you don't have a the, mace. The, yeah. new, the new one is five tick, yeah? Yeah, it's five tick. So you, you have to understand, like, the nuances. Like, for example, at next, you, you have to, you want to learn how to, like, uh, step in and stall the boss with it, for example. And for corp, it's, like, very niche, right? If you're, you know, only if you're doing the method that I'm talking about, it's better. So, okay. it's, so it's not like, you know, it's not like an easy replacement. You have to think about how you use it. So. Yeah. Well. I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I think, and there's also the ring as well. Oh, we that's haven't covered the the ward either, have we? Yeah, the ward yeah. is pretty straightforward, though. I yeah. think. Okay, well, break like, it down it's like you're talking to someone who does not know what the fuck you're talking about. Just in case someone <laughs> yeah. like that's here. Just yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just in case just, somebody like that. Just in case, in case <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> no, the ward. Uh, the ward will give magic damage. It's the first shield ever to, to give magic damage. It's, so is it five percent? Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Uncharged three percent. Charged five percent. So oh, that's gonna be disgusting. Wait, charge. How do you charge it? With uh, arcane. So like, if you don't use oh, the arcane on oh, it, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so well, you can hit like eighties now, though. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. The max hit I I saw with it I was using recently was eighty, right? So it'd be like an eighty-two, maybe. Oh that's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not um, be able to afford it. It should be really good at mage roll top for sure. Um, good for slayer tasks. Yeah. Uh, definitely not good with the new weapon because the new weapon's two ended. <laughs> All right, but yeah, chambers. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah chambers. Right, is is oh, the new staff so gonna be used in top at all? I'm trying to think. Yeah, it should be Fispila, Fispila, Vanguard, Mother Down, Tob. Oh, Tob. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. A good point. <laughs> uh, like, honestly, it might be better at. It might be. It might be better at maiden or something. 
And of course, yeah. Nilo Cra- Nilo King, you know, things like that. Nilo King, yeah. yeah. That actually is going to be really nice for Nilo King because it's five tick. Nilo Honestly, I, I I can imagine because, for example, you know, you could, uh, I do major a lot, right? And sometimes I'm lazy and I just want to try in the boss. Why wait for the traps to spawn? You actually hit the boss yeah. with Trident. So I assume with the, you know, with the new staff, it, it might actually be like Tito, actually. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming it'll be worth for like the mage role to bring at the very oh, least. Oh, absolutely. If yeah, absolutely. bring in all that gear. Yeah, like it should, it should actually slap Maiden up quite a bit. Yeah. 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 And King now. I'm, I'm just excited to see like speed running, especially. Yeah. The ring also has some pretty niche use. Yeah, it'd be good at next, for example, if you're ranging only. If you're ranged what, only, so good at next. What is the ring? I'm trying to think. What else could they bring that they already haven't had with all the other rings? I mean, there's so many, like, Lord of the Rings. It gives a, a special yeah. attack restoration proc. Yeah. It makes it, it, d- faster, it doubles. I can't remember how fast it is. Yeah, it doubles, doubles the regen. Yeah. Can you yeah. imbue that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that <laughs> triple that was a good ring, bro. That'd be a pretty have good ring. Does it have any stats on it, or is it just like basic? I don't think it has stats. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. think people might bring it for like Inferno speed runs if they're doing Thrall tech or something, yeah. so they can like blow pipes back more, but. I don't. I don't really know what else it would be used for. It might be used at next, next. for sure. Next range only. Next, yeah, yeah next, that'd yeah. be a huge DPS increase with this hard crossbow. Um, sure. could be good for like chambers, perhaps. Maybe chambers could be. So like, it, they don't, it's not going to be a skilling ring where you just chop trees faster or something. No. Well, no, you no, could. One day. You could yeah. do that actually. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, right. yeah. 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 Ah, yeah expect it. Because <laughs> if you nice. have preserve oh, and God. the ring on. You can actually, if you're like 88 or whatever, you can like spec and you'll probably stay above 90. You can just chop redwoods at 88. Like, so it's kind of a skilling soft. ring. There, of there's a niche use for skilling in there. Yeah. Mm. yeah, there we go. Yeah, I mean, I still would like a ring of vigor if we're off topic about it. You know, ring, ring of vigor would still be a nice item to have. Well, Is there any there? items that they have? Um, it, would, it would lower the cost of a spec use by 10%. Oh, that was back when Dungeoneering was a thing. Yeah. You would. Yeah, Double Karasi was not around then. No, you yeah. wouldn't. You would Dragon Claw into Karasi. We we covered this. I said in the last podcast. I said yeah. people that double Karasis were the biggest noobs in the wildy back then. So don't <laughs> you dare, Michael. That's not I what would. we do. We claw would. into Karasi. No, no, no. I totally would. I don't give a shit. I d- I would double Karasi anyone on the streets, dude. I don't give a shit <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, is there any items that we haven't like? Is this all of them? They're not as like some. I mean, the room pouch add on. This the nice. yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, I mean yeah, the yeah. dagger jewels, the the jewels for the new caress. It's so complicated yeah, to explain. I can't it imagine those are going to be particularly useful though. It was just because like, all, ah race three. I imagine that's it. Yeah, well, because yeah, yeah, you can only three. use two of them in the raid, and then yeah. the third one is going to be like for people who can't afford like. Yeah. You know, Inquisitor Scythe for KQ. Yeah, that yeah, that's literally did they, it. Did they cover, like, the regular loot, too? No. No. Okay, so there are some surprises. Like, you might get... Uh, I reckon Buckets of Sand might be something. on that table. I was going to throw hmm, out there. Probably, it makes sense, dude. Some I reckon you might get, like, a thousand Buckets of Sand in a raid or something. Yo, give me some that. Dragon Arrowheads. Oh, my God. Or mm, Dragon that's Arrowheads. That's actually a good idea. Mm. I need it, dude. Well, that whatever comes from yeah. the normal loot is probably going to get devalued immensely, though, right? Because yeah. everyone's going to be doing this for a bit. So yeah, like, like the wines of Zami from Taw. Wow, I love it though, personally. But yeah, it definitely, uh, you know, yeah, it something, the something's going there. down, bro. I'm sure they thought deeply about that, though. They've mm-hmm. been they've been hitting these updates spot on uh, economy wise. So yeah, yeah, I did. Um, nah, I probably shouldn't say that. I did see <laughs> yeah. the looted. I did see them loot a chest at the end, so I know a couple of things. Oh, oh, yeah, you can't tell. Yeah. What's it rhyme with? You know, <laughs> what does it smell like? like? Um, Blood Blard is what it rhymes with. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Jack, call him. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, it, right? What if you yeah. like? It would it be past your NDA if you lied, but you gave us the wrong item. You could just like. <laughs> You tree logs or something. Give us a shit. guess. If I, told, if I told you it was wrong, I don't know if that really counts for anything. <laughs> That's still right, because then you eliminated the options. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, is there, is yeah. there going to be like something like a vial of sand that you fill? You will, you will not it? receive unstrung magic shortbows from the raid. I can guarantee that. So strong magic shortbows. That is. Yeah. yeah well. <laughs> uh, 
Damn, dude. Right. Hey, so, uh, hey by uh, the way, I we're think... two hours in. What do you guys want? Yeah, yeah. I, I think what we'll do is wrap this up. Uh, I do yeah. have one more question on this list that I wanted to uh, just ask you real quick, Tasty. Yeah. So um, I was just wondering, so first things first, if you guys, our audience, haven't checked it out, uh, we'll link it down below. The base podcast. Uh, we're trying, Thank you know, we're, plug. I appreciate that. We, we, we speak about this a little bit, and I think that it's super healthy to have other <laughs> RuneScape podcasts just in the community. So I'm really happy to see you guys doing that. Um, and I just have a question about it. Uh, what's the vision going forward for that podcast? Are you still figuring it out? Um, something I've observed even from Good just question. earlier today was somebody was doing a guide on something so it's like is it becoming a network are you guys making a uh, a stream team or is it just yeah what's that's, going on that's with a it very here? good question that's a very good question so uh we have a youtube channel we have the based youtube channel which is like our, our stream team and everything and we really would like to grow it into like a like a known brand and not even just the runescape community but potentially farther if it takes off kind of like an otk mm-hmm. sort of thing like that's our very long-term yeah, yeah. goal for it Um, And we just started making like a lot of like group content videos. We did like a gauntlet challenge together. We're filming a Tob challenge together. Um, Just things that we think are like really fun YouTube videos to watch. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's basically like we're, we're trying to make a brand, you know, we're trying to grow ourselves and then like, you know, grow the RuneScape community in general. And then, you know, grow ourselves. So I think that's awesome, man. I I like the, uh, the O2K example as well because i follow yeah. like Hasman and all of that yeah. yeah that's that's super in- i was hoping you were gonna say something like that because yeah it I was, feels like it i saw, mm-hmm. I saw a post like earlier and it, i think it was like there's some guide coming out on the on the youtube channel i'm like man they're doing some really creative stuff over there so we've, hey, yeah, we've, we've got some big plans we've got some big plans awesome right well dude it's been a pleasure uh having you on here thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to be on here um yeah, thank you for the invite i appreciate it is there no anything problem. that you would like to shout out or anybody or anything like that? No free shout outs. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no free shout outs. Oh, okay. No free shout outs, baby. Okay. Yes. All right, well, his links will be in the description regardless. So check out Mr. Tasty and all his platforms and ambitions. Mm. Yep. Thank you guys. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. good.